it almost felt like we had the responsibility of the world to do something serious about it. In a world that seemed highly uncertain, that seemed extremely, uh, where, where you couldn't drive control, we felt that we were the ones who could help people get fitter and drive control on what they could. So we launched various initiatives in this time. The first was Healthify Studio, where you could actually, where as many of you have coached our customers, where you could, where you could actually train remotely through tools and solutions that you were already familiar with, like Zoom, et cetera, and get to work out at home with some of the best coaches around the world. We actually, in the second wave, when things got even more concerning, we took it on a, upon ourselves to launch Vaccinate Me. We built it over a weekend with APIs from the government, and we helped people get access to vaccine in a real-time notification environment by WhatsApp and Telegram. And I know many of you have received vaccines through that. We helped 25 million people uh, find vaccines during this time, and particularly people of the elderly community, we were grateful to do our bit. Not just that, gyms shut down, offline nutritionists shut down, and we hired those who had lost their jobs. In the last two years, we hired 2,000 nutritionists and trainers in a time when most companies were shutting down and were otherwise, unfortunately, having to let go of, of resources. And we launched Healthify Plus, this is something we had alluded to at last Ignite, if you may remember, specialized programs for people with medical condition predispositions. Cholesterol, PCOS, thyroid, hypertension, diabetes, are specialist programs that we actually modified our, uh, our obesity management solution towards, where we added specialists in those fields and doctors in those fields, and, and, and we were able to deliver impact. In fact, in these two years, we helped people track two billion foods and workouts. We helped people lose 10 million kgs of weight and we help people reduce their risk significantly for COVID link complications by reducing their metabolic syndrome parameters for diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol, PCS, thyroid by more than 15%. This is the impact that we have done in the last two years. More than that, 30% of our, of our subscriptions started to come from Plus and Studio in these times. So what we were working on actually had some real impact on business as well. And of course, we healthified millions. To tell you the story of how our customers engage with us in this time, there's no better way than to actually hear them. When COVID-19 brought the world to a screeching halt, that was the first time when I saw myself actually getting unhealthy and my life came to a standstill. I decided that I had to concentrate more about my health. And that's when I came across Healthify Me. And it was truly a savior. So it's changed my life completely. Healthify Me has been the only thing that has helped me be consistent during the entire lockdown. I've managed to reduce 40 kilograms. I'm much more fitter now. I feel much happier and healthier from within. I've completely reversed diabetes. I am off medicines for the last five months. My sleep has improved, uh, my work-life balance has got improved. And I just loved the Healthy Fi Me journey. Healthy Fi Me has been a savior for me this lockdown. It's not an app anymore for me. It's more like a friend to me. Many, many of the people you saw in the video and 50 other of our top customers and users are in the audience, so please give it up to all of them who healthified themselves in this time. Thank you very much for trusting us as your partners in uncertain times. Now, last Ignite, we were 10 million users, and this Ignite, we've actually hit 31 million. Um, to tell you how this pans out, and to help you visualize it a little bit, I'd love to showcase how this growth journey actually went about. I've been told that we're going to walk you through this in a minute, so I'm going to come back to this. Um, you know, every Ignite, lots of things change. Some don't. So, um, last Ignite, if you may remember, 
he was so proud to have been in the double digit of annual re annualized revenue run rate. Basically, we had finally hit a 100 crore a year mark in terms of top line, and we were absolutely mind blown by that ourselves, excited. I remember the time when we saluted and celebrated that. Well, thanks to all the hard work that we did, thanks to all the effort that we put in in trying to do the best for our customers, we actually scaled that through Ignite with an increasing growth to $23 million last year. And this year, I'm excited to say that we've crossed $50 million in run rate revenue. <laughs> our company is now doing north of 300 crores a year and is growing fast and strong thanks to the belief of customers like you and coaches like you and teams like you, then partners like you that are present in this room today. Also, we crossed 200,000 paying subscribers, and interestingly, 40% continue to remain the AI-only subscribers, staying healthified through to its core tech DNA. Of course, we raised $75 million CDC last year, so thank you, LeapFrog, who co-led that round. I believe Biju and your team are in the audience as well. And, uh, and thanks to Kosla Ventures as well. We'll hear from Vinod uh, later on today. And uh, we turned 10 years young in February of this year, just a month ago. <laughs> but I think what, uh, in fact, it was Bala, an old mentor, a friend, partner in crime, who reminded us just a few days ago in the board meeting that sometimes good to take a step back and actually realize and recognize that with all of this, Ladies and gentlemen, we are the largest digital health company in this country. So, what does it take to healthify a billion? I think overarchingly and more than anything else, I believe it takes guts. And I think that our team has had a lot of in these 10 years. But we are also equally cognizant that what got us here won't get us there. In fact, COVID gave us a lot of time to reflect and also think about who we are and what our purpose is and how do we go about delivering on our success here forward. Here forward. We also recognize that technology and consumer behavior had fundamentally shifted in these last few years. We've all become very familiar and uh, comfortable with technology. Technology has become affordable, adaptive. It's something that we expect to work around our needs and constraints. Uh, we've become techno-friendly. We've become also comfortable being at home. We expect things to be delivered at home, including tests, groceries, and other things. We are no longer the people we were five years ago. And so Healthify Solution also had to evolve of what we had evolved it to 2018 when we had launched Healthify Smart. And as we looked at all of this, as, as, a, as a friend of mine puts in his WhatsApp status, a famous Shakespeare quote of, it came to us, that what's past is actually prologue to who we stand today. And it's a prologue to a book that should begin here for, here and now, as we look to the next 10 years. And today, Ignite is actually about that. So let me tell you how we are thinking about it by sort of immersing you in our experience of, uh, of inner probing, of inner thinking about what is health defining. After some thought, we recognize that, of course, we are a behavior change company fundamentally. Then how do we deliver weight loss, fitness? We are a behavior change company that actually improves metabolic health fundamentally. That's what, in essence, we do. But then again, it begs the question of what is metabolism to begin with? Seems like a very nebulous word. Some say uska metabolism bhot achai, loses weight really fast, mera metabolism kharab hai, or sometimes it's good, it's bad. What is metabolism, right? So if we had to break it down at a, at a very basic level, metabolism is the balance of energy being stored and energy being utilized. Now think of us as sort of batteries, or think of, think of us as energy devices that are able to, if we have excess of energy in, we store it as fat, and if there is less energy in, we use that fat to actually burn for working out. Now for millions and thousands of years, our bodies have evolved to quickly take the fat as early as we can. Because we used to live as cavemen in hunger-oriented times, right? We didn't know if we were going to get the next meal or not. So every time we saw food, we absorbed it. In fact, the higher in sugar and fat it is, ice cream, gulab jamun, etc., the tastier it feels to us. Because we want to quickly absorb that fat. Because we don't know 
you know, next two, three days if we can hunt and kill an animal or not. Except we don't hunt and kill, we order on Swiggy or Zomato, right? So evolution, however, doesn't change in five, 10, 100 years, but our metabolism systems and fundamentals have remained largely the same. But it's a concept of energy conservation within our body. That's what metabolism is. So to take a first attempt at it, we designed Healthify to, to actually quantify this behavior. What, what is the energy coming in? What is the energy going out? Can we figure out a balance behind it? Will this relationship help us get people to be fitter? And we started with, of course, as you know, calorie counting. We added, you know, steps tracking, fitness tracking, nutrition tracking came in as an important variable in there. We, of course, layered in water tracking, etc. These were the early input variables and constraints that we were utilizing. All of these input signals would go on to actually train our engine, our app. That would actually give back to our consumers nudges, insights of this is good, this is bad, this is what you can have better, this, this you should stay away from. You know, a classic Healthify scene is, you know, can you suggest me something healthy to eat and you get to understand what that is and hopefully make better behavioral choices as a result of all of that. You know, and we started to see that, of course, in many of our consumers and we, as we saw their patterns and their habits transform from, you know, just making little nudges and choices that were different than maybe when they had at Healthify. In fact, any of you have used, have used Healthify know that when you open the app, the first thing you realize is, my God, gulab jamun is 300 calories and it takes me like eight kilometers to burn it, right? That concept relationship is what we explained to our customers to begin with. Now, this could only take us so far, so we added coaching into that design fundamentally, our trained group of professionals who could navigate our customers towards better behavior change outcomes and learning from a lot of their interactions with our clients over many, many years, we finally evolved RIA and our AI systems, and together with AI, RIA, coaches, our engine became smarter. And this design of getting consumer written input criteria, making sense of them, and driving them towards behavior change by AI, tech, and coaching was Healthify Me 1.0, fundamentally in its essence. But you can only improve what you can measure, right? And what were we trying to improve? Weight, metabolic health, right? And we realized we couldn't measure it, right? Consumers just to, just to report it to us, but we couldn't quite quantify it actually. So we had to adapt a lot of guesswork behind it. And that is the first problem we tried to solve. And to explain to you this journey further of how we are navigating from 1.0 to 2.0, especially in the last few months, how that has gone. I want to invite on stage our chief business officer, who's also our chief product officer and is like a co-founder to me, Uma Maheshwaran Bhoj Rajan. Anjan, take it away. I have to play with my name. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the clicker works this time. And you guys can hear me, right? So when we started off on this journey from Healthify 1.0 to the future, um, we had to answer one very important question. Why do users use Healthify Me? Now, we are India's largest health and wellness app, but we are also India's largest weight loss solution. 70% of our users come into Healthify Me to lose weight. But to understand why they used Healthify Me. It was also important to understand the reason behind their weight loss journey. We did some research, and what came out of it was interesting. About 28% of our users wanted to just look better, 25% wanted to just be more athletic, 15% of them wanted to be uh, fitter parents for their children. Now, this also made us step back and realize that Every weight loss goal was associated with a different motivation behind it. And that also meant that each one, each one of us is unique. And we need to recognize that as we build out the next version of Healthify Me. For example, until now on the Healthify Me app, um, your transformation goal was nothing but your weight goal. You could set your goal. Um, you could use the trackers, um, the, the food tracker, the workout tracker, the water tracker. Um, stick to your habits, lose some weight, 
uh, get contextual advice from our coaches and Ria, and possibly even hit your goal. When you do, we of course celebrate with you. Sometimes we come home, shoot a testimonial, because that's the way our company has always worked. But over the last few years, we also came to realize that maybe weight is not the only indicator of your transformation goal and your progress towards the transformation goal. We have had numerous examples of users transforming themselves, becoming fitter, um, looking better, by not necessarily moving the number on the weighing scale. It could have been body fat, or they could have lost body fat, built some muscle, or lost body fat and just did not lose any muscle. Now that also makes you look better. So the, as the first step of reimagining Health of IME, it was important to understand how we can measure progress better. And this started with reimagining the way how a weighing scale works. Some of you might know that we have already tried this over the last few months, but tonight officially introducing Health of IME Smart Scale. As the tagline says, your transformation is no longer a function of your weight loss journey. Now with the Health of IME Smart Scale, Health of IME allows you to track over 12 body metrics. These could be body fat, muscle mass, visceral mass. A lot of these mean different things and measuring them is a very important part of your journey. But any other Smart Scale in the market would do that. We had a thesis behind launching our smart scale. That's because habit formation has always been at the core of health of IME. Be it the food tracker or the water tracker, it kept you on track. Now with the weight tracker, research showed us that the more you weigh yourself, the more likely you are to stick to your journey, no matter how hard it is. So we went out and we tested it in true health of IME style. So for the coaches in the audience, you would remember in March 22, we introduced um, the Smart Scale. We did a beta launch. Over 5,000 users tried us. Now, obviously, when, when, when we delivered Smart Scale to users, uh, we expected them to weigh themselves a lot more. So only 2% of our paying users used to weigh themselves on a weekly basis um, before the smart, smart Scale came in. And once we delivered the smart scale and we saw how those users behaved, we saw 19% of them track their weight. Now this was expected, but the real thesis was if they were weighing themselves a lot more, then were they also being healthy? Earlier, 24% of our users used to track their food on our app, among these live paying users, used to track their food on their app on a weekly basis. Now today, guys, with the smart scale, we have proven that it has impact. 60% of them track food on the app. So now the smart scale is, is obviously a product that has had impact. So tonight, we officially are making smart scale free for all users on our coaching services across India. But over the last few weeks, what, what, we, what we forget is the amount of effort that goes from our technology teams and our uh, product managers to get little things out. So just before Ignite, uh, the teams were working all night last night to launch something that is true to us. When you stand on the smart scale, if you are a free user or if you are a smart plan user, RIA would step in and give you contextual feedback real time. And if you are a coach user, our coaches can contextually talk to you about your weight loss journey at the point at which you step on the scale. Now this is where we started. This was Healthify 1.0. Now we have added the whole concept of smart scale, not only for habit formation, but also for measuring yourself better. But we went one step ahead. The next innovation that we have lined up was heavily inspired by our coaching services over the last five years. A lot of the users who come into Health of IME to lose weight also have a medical condition. The number is kind of outstanding, I would say. 40% of our paying customers have a medical condition. 
users would have diabetes, thyroid, PCOS, cholesterol, or hypertension. And when these users step into the coaching services side of Healthify Me, we take care of making sure that our advice is personalized. Now, over the last few years, we have had tremendous impact on these users. 88% of users who are diabetic saw an improvement in the HbA1c levels. 50% of users who have cholesterol saw improvement in the cholesterol levels. People who had hypothyroid, 80% of them saw an improvement in the TSH levels. Now, a lot of you in the audience might be thinking, OK, fine, you're talking about medical conditions. What if I don't have one? How does it matter to me? Right? So the best way to explain this is with an example and then statistics of our uh, users. Uh, over the last few months, both Tushar and I have gone through the same journey. We went through a weight loss journey, and we plateaued off for a bit. Um, I had lost about 10 kgs, and then I wasn't moving anymore. And uh, both our coaches and our doctors asked us to take up a metabolic test. Uh, we gave a blood sample, we got our results, and we realized that Tushar had a vitamin D deficiency, I had a B12 deficiency, and then we started working towards correcting that. Of course, we saw results after that, but this shouldn't be a one-off case. So we went ahead and we checked with our users what's happening with them. Found out that 80% of our users had a vitamin D deficiency, 20% of our users had a vitamin B12 deficiency, and across all the metabolic indicators that we have available in India as part of our diagnostic tests, we realized that people had multiple combinations of these problems. Also, over the last few years, and the last two years especially, uh, we noticed that a lot of us have become comfortable with uh, home tests, such as RT-PCRs. A lot of you would have done it at home. Most of you wouldn't have gone to a diagnostic center to, um, to get your blood reports. Um, it's become something that we're used to, and also, in India, we're lucky enough to have a very low-cost solution available to us. So it was good to put two and two together. So tonight, we want to tell you that we have brought a metabolic panel into the Health of IME ecosystem. <laughs> the metabolic panel is a home screening where a sample of your blood will be collected from your home. Over 80 plus parameters are tested and you would get a report. Now, those of you who have you've had a um, um, diagnostic lab report uh, would remember that it would be uh, a, a kind of a booklet with a lot of parameters. You don't know what makes sense and what doesn't. And so we decided to simplify that in the process of doing this. We have a report that will tell you what parameters are critical, what parameters are, on, uh, are borderline, what are normal. So we focus on the right things. Now, beyond this, we have designed our entire ecosystem around it. Our coaches would now remove foods that are bad for you for a particular medical condition, good for you, give you guidelines, and check your progress against those guidelines. So it's also important if we find that there is a metabolic parameter that is um, anomalous in your body, uh, we want to take up the challenge of moving it in the right direction. And that's why quarterly metabolic panels are now live on Health of IME medical plans across India. This wouldn't have been possible. Whenever we do these innovations, it, it, it's never possible to do this when you have players in the space who are really good at doing it. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, the four players that I've put up over here, Healthy Ends, Red Cliff, M Fine and Farm Easy have supported us throughout our journey. We also have Ashish from Red Cliff in the audience, so give it up to them, guys. Without them, this wouldn't have been possible. So now, measuring progress, coming back to why I'm on stage. So measuring progress uh, was only a function of your weight before. And now it is a function of body metrics uh, from the Healthify Smart Scale, um, also, your metabolic panel reports. So we've added a very essential part of our entire ecosystem as we go from Healthify 1.0 to the future. Now, you must be wondering, what does that empty box mean? 
everything that you see on the screen, right, from food tracker to workout to water to weight to your metabolic panel, all of these are snapshots of your health at that point in time. Is there a way to actually find out how your body is doing, how your metabolic health is doing, real time? To explain that, right, I would like to invite Tushar back on stage, please. Yay. Awesome. Thank you, Anjan. Guys, give it up to Anjan. He's been pioneering not just our... Uh, Anjan has not only been pioneering with the product and tech teams for an entire 1.0 to 2.0 migration, including smart scales. Metabolic panel was also was extremely instrumental at being at the helm of us delivering our $50 million run rate. So big shout out for that. Um, so yeah, you know, I want to take a quick, um, quick fun detour before we get back into the real-time insights piece. Traditionally, what do people typically advise in sort of health and fitness, right? You guys would have gone to nutritionists, trainers, or other advisors, not, not Healthify maybe, but others. You kind of hear very generic advice fundamentally, right? Fundamentally, you hear, hey, listen, have fruits, you know, kind of have healthy stuff, drink more water, work out, maybe try it running a little bit. Don't have fatty food, fried food, don't have sugary drinks, right? just generic stuff. And that used to really perturb us. I mean, if metabolism is unique and different, is influenced by so many other parameters, why should advice be generic in all of that? Right? And at least, I used to always get bound, like, can we please get more specific? Those of you know, who know me, know me to be extremely annoying when it comes to, uh, you know, getting to the bottom of things. Right? And, and there were usually no great answers. They were always answers valid at macro scales, but not at immediate micro scales. So I, one thing that we wondered is, why can't advice be specific? And if metabolism different, differs for everyone, then why not? And I think the answer we came out with is that it's like driving blindfold. If you're driving blindfold fundamentally or sort of semi-eyes open, what's the advice you can give to the driver about driving? Right? Just drive slow. Right? That's all that you can do. Um, you can't actually tell them that, hey, the road might be completely empty and accelerate or that there's a heavy traffic in front, right? It'll generally say, listen, just approach caution, right? But that's not how it should be. What if there was a way to get real-time metabolism, right? What if we didn't have to wait for days or weeks or months, but really we could figure out here and now, have I done what I've done? Is that right or is that wrong? Well, I think that's what had motivated us to build calorie counting, right? You track on the food and you're like, oh, ho, I've had too much, maybe I should take it easy. Right? But it is still empirical, it's still sort of user-reported, it's what you type in. It's not evidence-based, it's not a real measure like metabol like panel is or like smart scale is. It would have been awesome if there was a way to evidence-based nutrition track stuff, right? Can you measure food fundamentally? So maybe you don't have to track. Or even if you're tracking, you're getting some serious hardcore insights on it. Well, it turns out that there is, you know, that there is a way to try and identify how your body might be doing at that instant. And, and the answer to that lies in your glucose values. Now, this was very interesting when we first came across that model. You know, we have later on, you'll be, uh, you know, we're going to have a quick talk by our chief medical officer, Dr. Shabani Dlai, and almost, uh, you know, she, she otherwise teaches at Stanford. And, but for about 18, 24 months, we've been talking about this. And, you know, the model of glucose can actually help you understand what your metabolism is, how it works, is very interesting. What you eat, gets translated down into blood sugar, fundamentally broken down. And then, your, thanks to insulin, your cells get to have it, absorb it, and then get to decide. If you're moving around, walking around, doing things like I'm doing right now, it'll burn off, just like energy does, right, when it comes at home. But if you don't, then it unfortunately has to store it somewhere, and it stores it as glycogen or stores it as fats. And so glucose and how glucose levels are, are fairly real-time indicator of are you going to be gaining fat or are you going to not be gaining fat at that time here and now, right? It's like, it should remind me of, remember our good old days in India when electricity would come for a short while and the moment electricity would come, everybody would turn on their pumps, fill up their tanks, switch on the refrigerators, all the ACs, all that stuff, right? Electricity, agi, electricity, agi, this thing used to be this thing. So the thing is, our body's kind of like that. Electricity comes, we're like, oh my God, there's food in the system. Let's, if there is some machine to be run, you're working, it'll burn it off or it'll store it as fat. 
So let's look at this as to how exactly what happens when you eat. We tried experiments, you know, well, in the name of science, of course, you know, uh, many of them. We tried having a chicken biryani, you know, 455 calories, and, uh, and here's what actually happened to my, metabol to my glucose levels, guys. <laughs> Incidentally, that 100, 110 marker is kind of where, you know, 100 to 120 marker is kind of where it starts to become high. If it is in layman terms, it's sort of it's higher up there, stays for a long time. Your body is unfortunately not being able to use it and wants to convert it into fat. Well, in this case, it actually did because, well, you know, I was sitting for a... <clears throat> Sorry, board members, board meeting, you know, so, uh, and, and obviously all that glucose was converting into fat real time at that time, right? And, and, then, and then thank God I could come home and I took Toofy for a walk, it's my lovely dog. This is us trying to look like each other, we do that sometimes, no judgments here. And we walked and, you know, obviously I saw glucose levels fall down, right? This is just how, this is like a real time picture of how body operates, but this is not how you can, it's not easy to do this, right? to look at glucose values and see whether it's adding fat, activity, sort of what is it doing. It's because today it requires blood pricks, it requires you to pierce things around, and we looked for inspiration, you know, around the world, there were phenomenal companies also who are utilizing CGM technologies available today to try and drive and get a sense around glucose. You know, super sapiens levels, ultra humans, ultra human co-founders are here, guys, shout out to those guys. And, and we saw that you can actually interpret glucose in a nice way. We had a labs team that always keeps working on what's next, and for the last one year plus, they were also tinkering around with different kind of CGMs. Abhijit will talk about how when he came in and joined, he saw that there were, I don't know, glucose on all kinds of fruits, CGMs on all kinds of fruits, and you're like, what's that doing for like, you know, more than a year? And we could, and, and th because this is how it really works. I mean, this is me after masala dosa, is Anjan after masala dosa, clearly he's not South Indian. This is Roshni after masala dosa, you know, which really works. And you can see like the same human being, same food, but different responses, maybe because of their uh, status at that time or their predispositions or their microbiome. I mean, Anjan's like, what? It's true though. Anjan, I know you're a secret North Indian person. And this is me after mango, this is me after mango and almonds, uh, interestingly, right? So food combinations tend to affect what and how my body is adapting and reacting to all these things. Incidentally, this is me after a glass of wine, and that's me after a glass of beer. You can imagine what is giving and generating fat in my body and what is not, right? So, what this gave us an assessment of that, hey, nutrition and fitness strategies can and should be personalized, right? I mean, what works for me may not work for you, what works for me at a certain time of the day, given what I'm doing, how I'm sleeping and feeling may not work for you, etc. But it was gated on one thing, how can we measure glucose accurately? and in real time. Is it possible to do so? So we worked around, looked around, with various companies who are providing CGM solutions, we partnered, discussed, talked, and after a lot of experimentation, and a lot of engineering, and some, some bit of luck, and a lot of hacking, today I'm proud to introduce, ladies and gentlemen, our BIOS solution to you. BIOS is a continuous glucose monitoring tracking system that actually you can zap, that you can put on your arm, and then you can zap your glucose levels at any time you want with any phone that has NFC. Just tap it, and, uh, and you can get a sense around where your glucose levels are right then and there, and make real-time navigational decisions on what to do, where to go. It's just suddenly like the, somebody had lifted the blindfold, and now you can actually drive. The road is empty, go. The road is not, slow down. It's a... It's a real-time glucose management for metabolic health solution that we are finally very proud to actually release out. And uh, you can all get yourself a goodie bag when you step out or purchase yourself one as you do so. Now, let me walk you through how BIOS actually works today. This is actually a, this is a real curve of mine from a you know, few weeks ago. You can see that I kind of was... Probably there's a blip there. Our app recognizes that, asks as to what might have created that. And, and well, Healthify is the world's finest nutrition tracking system. So you can easily tap in what food or activity you might have had. And it tries to make sense of it. In this case, it was a chicken subway that 
you know, what, what, how, how bad or good the glycemic impact, the sugar impact, the glucose impact of that food is, and your coach reacts in real time or as close to possible as real time, that, hey, I'm seeing a pattern here. It's the third time you're experiencing a spike with bread. Maybe let's skip bread when you can and go for a 15-minute walk past your meal. What's interesting is she's saying when you can, not that you must. All that is being paired up with is maybe go for a walk past your meal. That's what you can help with. And, you know, this is sort of my glucose curve from much more recent chicken and hummus. Obviously, that's much tastier as well, let's be honest, than a Subway sandwich. And, and with some walking usually. Uh, and you can see those, those bar charts, those are your steps. Uh, BIOS not only combines your glucose curves, it also tracks in heart rate, steps, and other monitoring uh, instances that give you good in insights right then and there. And, and you can see that, you know, I had a good score and that my coach actually talked about the fact that I've been following my diet advice and going for a 20-minute step count after that, which is a burning that glucose live off and therefore not converting to fat. Um, and it's not just me that is changing their habits. 87% of the people feel that they have modified their food choices with CGM. Uh, with BIOS, 47% people actually feel more likely to go take a walk who have adopted BIOS so far. And, and obviously I mentioned how it tracks in nutrition activity steps and heart rate onto a single platform. Um, and, uh, and, and in the journey to 1.2, from 1.0 to 2.0, BIOS is that one key puzzle that we had to land to get there. But almost. So what was missing? What was missing is our coaching philosophy. You know, Healthify services, which Roshni, you hear from a long time ago, who joined us as a part-time trainer, mom of three, at 2014. Today we have a 2,000 strong force and Roshni has led it in all these years, and uh, was based on several philosophies, but in the, again, in the absence of real-time navigational data, was perhaps used to giving diet plans and routines, which we with experience started to know that work better than the others. Today with Pro, we're actually moving to flexible diet strategies. So in fact, the same Roshni gave me an advice the other day, I said, hey, I have a, I have a champagne and wine party to go to at my neighbor's building. And you know, what should I do? And she's like, you should have chicken salad right before, make sure, and, and, and make sure that you don't sit. Dance if you want, walk around, don't sit, right? And it worked like a charm. Flat glucose response as a result, you know, fiber, protein had before, and then the fact that I was moving, and you know, and then that has been working. So this is flexible diet strategy, right? This is not a plan that you get laid out. This is here and now, what should I do? You can, you can kind of, basically you can have your cake and eat it too. We are starting to migrate from a calling-led philosophy to our customers, which, is, which predates 2018, to now using messages and nudges that are non-intrusive in nature. And this is our pro-coaching philosophy. We're moving from prescriptions to real-time nudges as we start to get more aware of what's happening. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Healthify Me 2.0 ensemble, which has evidence-linked user inputs on one side, not just user reported patterns, which has AI and coaches that drive real-time nudges, not blanket advices that work for people, and that, not, that do not drive weight loss, but actually provide transformations on fat, on weight, on, on, on fat, on muscle, and, and, and improve overall metabolic health and fitness, keeping behavior change as constant. And Healthify Me 2.0, while is getting translated down, as Anjan said, on all the transform plans with our smart scale and all the plus plans with our metabolic panel. But with BIOS now, nothing completes our Healthify 2.0 plan better than Healthify Pro. And this is the solution that I'm excited to launch today. This Healthify Pro is now, as of today evening, is our flagship product that will combine the best of what we have to offer to our customers and will drive empirically known evidence-based results on our clients continuously. And uh, just to showcase this, I'd like to introduce Healthify Pro by a short video. Healthify Pro, a connected fitness system which helps you lose weight faster, more consistently, more holistically than you ever have before. Pro has the power of five. Meet BIOS. It's small, powerful, and helps you track your glucose every single minute. What? 
Why? Because when you eat, your glucose levels rise and your body tries to use it up. And if you can't, you gain weight. So with BIOS, you know what to eat and how to burn it. Nice. Go on, step on it. Your shiny new smart scale. When we say smart, it's really smart. It doesn't just tell you what your weight is, but it breaks it down into body fat, muscle mass, bone mass and more, making sure you're losing the right kind of weight. <laughs> well done, Rohan. Meet our metabolic panel. It checks you out from the inside. A slick dashboard with 84 data points about your health with just a drop of blood. Hey, your vitamin levels are low. No wonder you've been tired. Maybe add some apricots to your diet? I love apricots. Oh, our calorie tracker just got way smarter. Take a photo of your food or track from your favorites and it maps it back to your BIOS chart with calories and macronutrients. Now don't just count your calories. See how food impacts your body so that you can make smarter choices. And who's Pro5? That's us, the Healthify app and me, your coach. We bring all the pros together to craft a plan tailored just for you. The future of fitness is here. Some call it magic. We call it Healthify Pro. Thank you, everyone. Many of you have been wondering, uh, certainly my wife, what I've, why I've not been coming home of, of late very easily, and this is the reason, this is what's been keeping me up, and the entire team late at night as we've been working on Healthify Pro and creating this integrated solution together, and we're so excited that as of this moment, it's actually live on beta. You can go to healthifyme.com and you can join the waitlist, and we'll, we'll, we'll suit you up as soon as we can. Um, we're also excited that this is going to be a global product. So while this is going to be an India launch right now, we are expecting that in the next few months itself, we should be able to roll it out in several other markets, including many developed countries. Healthify Pro today is at the cutting edge of metabolic health. There is no other solution that we are aware of that combines these various technologies in the way we do with the specialization of coaching and technology that we have. And, um, and, and we are quite excited to be pioneering for the world in our field sitting out here in India with some of the best engineers in the world and designers sitting right next to you. So thank you for supporting and believing in us. We're very excited to have put it out there. And, uh, and you know, it's been showing results. Our, our coaches are obviously, uh, uh, we are creating a new separate team on Healthify Pro Coaching. That philosophy is getting down. And, uh, and yeah, it's now launched in beta. I guess one question that I have been asked a lot Smart is, do I need to... Smart skill is a bit of a shocker. Everything is super seamless. It awesome. I guess people went ahead of me. One question I've been asked is, do I need to wear BIOS all the time? And my answer has been, no, you don't. BIOS actually is a program that you can wear intermittently. And I want to tell you a little bit about that for sure. But since we have this video up that was, but not is there anymore, can we have that video back up again? I wanted to tell you early responses from our customers and what they have been thinking and feeling about Healthify Pro. So these are all of our beta users. These are all people who have been using it in the early days. Some of you are in the room. And, uh, and, and let's hear it from them. Smart scale is a bit of a shocker. Everything is super seamless. It is so addictive. It's connected weighing scales, which you can get up every day morning into. And now it's become an obsession. We can now understand more aspects to our own fitness goals. BMI. Metabolic age. Body fat, visceral fat. It syncs really quickly with your app. A lot of parameters that I thought would be off turned out to be actually fine. Across various metrics which um, this program tracks, there has been significant improvement in just a two-week period. The metabolic panel actually told my coach as to what are the things which are lacking in my diet. I think the BIOS was the real eye-opener for me. I would see my glucose the levels going up and down and up and down. I would check at least 10 times a day. It was a little obsessive. One of a really good quality uh, of this plan is we start with something called as a diagnostic test. My weight has come down by about three kilograms. I think it just helped me just be a little bit more mindful about what I'm eating. And most valuable are two coaches, one on the diet front and the other on the fitness front. The coach started looking at my body fat percentage and started telling me that, you know what, you're moving in the right direction, you're building muscle, which means that you're making a sustainable change happen. Really change the entire fitness game. I think you're already living in the future. And of course, me. 
Um, this is me with my pro experience in the last nine months, so appreciate all the, all the nudging and the egging I've been getting. I'm looking forward to dropping a lot of my fat percentage and improving my muscle mass in the next, next nine months. Um, so I was trying to tell everybody that do you need to wear BIOS all the time because that's what makes the program today inaccessible. That's what makes it unaffordable. BIOS is an expensive product. And at Healthify, we've been working hard to solve the answer to that problem. And we're excited to say that the answer is no. A patch you put on, it expires in 14 days. And we're trying to, ex we're trying to figure out technological ways of making that as extended as it's possible. Um, what we believe is that BIOS should be worn once a quarter or once a month. And our technology should get enough insights into the data patterns at that time about what foods and workouts work for you, how your patterns are at any time of the day, to actually make sense of the time in the middle and give you predicted, projected glucose curves. So Abhijit will tell you a lot more about that. But coming up very soon, we'll be able to intermittently, in between your bias charts as well, predict and project glucose curves. So, so hopefully, you know, just like my uh, dad-in-law gave up after the first, first BIOS curve and said that I'm going to wait a quarter, he'll at least be able to see the curves in the middle now with our technology, regardless of having a, a BIOS curve or not. Um, and look, I think Healthify, just to wrap here, Healthify 2 isn't just a product. In our minds, it is really a philosophy. It, and it transcends across our app coaching, AI systems, Transform, Smart, and, of course, Pro. It is one with evidence-based solutions that empower you to make the change, where you get in control and you move from diet plans to diet flexibility, and you move from fitness regimen to fitness freedom. To walk you through a little bit of how this magic is translating in across our product spaces, I'd like to invite Anjan back again, and we'd love to quickly walk you through with the rest of the members of our team and how they're translating it down into their various portfolios. Thank you, everybody. I'll be seeing you shortly again. So before we get started, uh, just wanted to check, are there coaches in the audience today? Couldn't hear any of you guys. Can you make some noise, please? OK, there you are. Right. Now, uh, the reason why I asked for this was um, the fact that a lot of the things that are going to be presented over the next 15, 20 minutes, uh, they've been under the radar. Most of you wouldn't know about it. So it's not just for the users, uh, I think. Um, it's going to be nice to present what the team has done over the last few days. Are we ready, guys? All right. So we, what, we've, what, what we've presented the whole evening until now has been this entire ecosystem that starts with tracking. Um, there is an advice layer. And of course, finally, the transformation on the user end. A lot of technology has gone into building the habit tracking as well as the brain of the company, as we call it, our coaches as well as our AI. So focusing down on what are we reimagining over here. We reimagine progress, uh, the way we can track a body real time, but what are we doing on this front? Until now, our coaches had to consume a lot of data points to give you contextual advice. It could be water, steps, nutrition, your sleep patterns, your workouts, how your weight is moving. Now, that's not an easy job, but we have obviously scaled really well over the last few years with our services, and we've had great impact. These services are provided over typically calls. As Tushar mentioned, we would be moving more towards the messaging end of our servicing going forward. And of course, there are multiple other ways in which coaches and RIA interact with our users. But the real name of the game is impact. To just sum up how our coaching services in 1.2 helped our users out, anybody who interacted with RIA on a regular basis saw 1.5x better results on Healthify Me. Anybody who interacted with coaches saw a minimum of 2x better results on health of timing. But can we do better? Over the last 
few months, we've again looked at what our primary habit formation module does. It kind of tells you that it is your transformation journey is just diet and workout. Uh, there are different things that you can do on the diet side, eat healthy at the right time, and you can work out, you can uh, walk after a meal, etc. So that's why we provide you two coaches. We have a nutritionist and a fitness trainer generally working with you on all our coaching services. A nutritionist would call you uh, at the scheduled time, send you messages, a fitness trainer would do the same. Uh, both of them giving you different types of advice, diet and workout. But as we started building out Healthify Pro and Healthify 2.0, we noticed that there was a problem with our coaching services that was getting a little more amplified with our new vision. For example, if there was a glucose spike, a coach, um, a nutritionist would, would probably ping you and tell you that, you know what, uh, you can replace this food by this food, or tomorrow why don't you try a different recipe for this food. The, our, our fitness coach would probably tell you, you know what, go for a walk, um, or work out in the morning to keep your variability stable, etc. So this advice, historically at Healthify Me, has come from two different channels, uh, two different coaches interacting separately with the client. So we challenged our engineering team last week because we saw that this problem was really growing when we were testing Pro at the beta level. And our engineering team took, took up the challenge to build what we call One Connect. Today, on One Connect, we, we have allowed our users to work with both their coaches together. Now, it's a connected messaging system. Um, that allows you to interact with your coaches on both diet and workout. The context is going to stay in one interface. But this is just problem solving. What else can we do is the question. Where is the power of AI? We keep talking about where is the power of AI. The teams have also been secretly working on this, bringing RIA into one connect. Now, RIA has always been a user's assistant. Um, but in this case, within One Connect, when you are chatting with your coaches, if Ria notices something that you say that Ria understands, Ria would step in. For example, if you were to tell your coach that I had oats for lunch or breakfast, Ria would step in and just ask you if I sh should I track your food um, with the health of me. And you could just say yes, and it would, it would get tracked. Now, this is a functionality that Ria would do otherwise, but we've brought it into a conversation. So you don't have to necessarily leave the conversation with your coaches to do other things on the app, is what our vision is. Similarly, Ria is also pegged to be a coach's assistant. A lot of this work is being done behind the scenes. We will be talking about it today. But as part of One Connect, we believe that all the information that's available to our coaches should also be available to our users about the user. For example, if you are having a conversation with your coach and you tell your coach that you had a great day, the coach can invoke RIA at any point in time to look at your stats and give you real-time feedback. Now, this has been envisioned, but also it has been launched. One Connect is now available on all pro plans starting this weekend. Very soon, all our coaching services are going to get one connect. Now, this is just one small element, as I said. You, you saw this huge vision of, um, of Healthify Pro and how everything fits in, right? Now, we have reimagined the way messaging works. Now, there is, of course, calling, there is diet, there is a lot of things that we do within Healthify Me. So we are also reimagining the way our philosophy works. As Tushar said, we're thinking about diet and workout differently. But the one part of Healthy Family that still stays on over the coming years is the fact that a very large part of your transformation journey is going to be diet, and a smaller part is going to be your workouts. To talk about the future of diet on Healthy Family, I would like to call on stage Pragya, our director of AI services. Thank you. Um, good evening, everybody. 
Uh, welcome to Vijay. So, as, uh, as Anjan mentioned, you know, diet guidance is uh, one of the core philosophies behind how we enable our users to transform. Um, can you go to the... Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Right? Um, now, the biggest challenge that we've seen uh, with diet guidance and, you know, enabling positive eating behavior is the fact that most people are not able to stay consistent with it. Now, we wanted to find out how we can help our users be more consistent. We went back and asked them this question. These are some of the answers that came out. But what really screamed, at, screamed out of this is flexibility. So what does flexibility mean to different people, right? For some of us, it means that we want to eat three meals a day. For some of us, it means that I want to eat a very heavy lunch, but a very light dinner. Some want to experiment with intermittent fasting, low-carb diets, etc. Some of us don't want a diet plan at all and just want to go with the flow. Some of us scroll through Swiggy every day for 15 minutes, every lunchtime and dinner time, just to say, yaar, koi to bata do, what should I eat? Right? So, knowing that, knowing that all of our users are different, how do we enable them on the app to be flexible with all of their nutrition needs? How do we solve that problem? So far, we've allowed users to track a fixed number of calories that we calculate for them, five meals a day, a fixed protein, carbohydrate, fiber, fat composition, only to today say that, hey, this doesn't work for everybody. Everybody is different. So, to, as the first step in the direction of diet flexibility, what we are doing is reimagining the way our food trackers work. Our food trackers will now be personalized to what you want to do. Flexibility to change your calories and macronutrients. Flexibility to add and remove the number of meals that you eat every day. I'm sure some of you have skipped lunch today, so you can track that right there on Healthify Me. Flexibility to adjust the calories in each meal. Flexibility to tell us exactly what time are you going to eat something so that we can remind you. Now that we have given you the flexibility, with that also comes great responsibility. It's our responsibility to ensure that you get the right guidance at the right time to make sure that you reach your goal. So, you know, today our AI systems provide certain level of flexibility in terms of, hey, I don't like this, can you give me some other suggestions? Uh, this food doesn't really fit into what I really do every day, right? But what can diet flexibility truly look like for our AI systems? True flexibility allows you to do the diet that you want to, a diet that works for you. Whether it's intermittent fasting, low-carb diets, keto diets, even Navratri fasting, or a simple weekend detox. Anything that you want to do, our AI systems can adapt to let you switch between these types of diets. And knowing your metabolic markers, knowing your Myers data, it can even suggest to you what type of diet will work for you to reach your goals in a sustainable way. Now, there are some of us who don't want to follow a diet plan, right? For those of you, we give you the flexibility to pick up guidelines. What should your healthy plate of food look like? It's different for all of us, right? What kind of foods you should eat? You know, for example, how do you consume more protein as a vegetarian? Should you eat beetroot for hypertension, etc.? Also, what types of food you should avoid? I'm sure, you know, all of us are looking forward to the food and drinks later, but in our minds, we're also thinking, hey, can we do something to make our Ignite event slightly more healthy than what it would otherwise be? Right? So the future of diet is flexible. Now, as our Healthify Me 2.0 vision provides for more flexibility to our users, in the app, using our AI. There's one very important part of this vision 
that we've not spoken about yet, and that's our coaches. A lot of you are in this room. You guys play a very crucial role in guiding and advising our users, right? But how do we enable our AI systems to help you continue doing that? To talk more about this, I'd like to invite Swati Bajaj, our Director of Premium Services on stage, please. Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone's having a great time. And of course, our coaches who are most excited about this segment. So we've all heard about Healthify 2.0 and what uh, uh, it means to us, right? Now imagine a coach's journey looking at already, you know, 10,000 data points in a week uh, for their 200 clients. Now that's going to change to almost 1 million data points, right? How does a coach now give the most personalized advice to their users? Let's look at an example. So this is Anjan's BIOS curve uh, from last Saturday. And the coach was notified about a spike at 6 PM. The coach was also notified about glucose variability in the night, which happened. And now the coach needs to decide, why did this happen? So in a non-AI world, ideally, a coach would look at what were the foods consumed by Anjan? What time did he eat? What were the quantities of the food? Did he work out? Did he record any medical condition prior? Did his latest metabolic panel detect certain parameters being off? Or did he have a good sleep? And 100 such parameters, right? Now, imagine they have to do this with 200 such clients. Is that even humanly possible? That's where power of AI comes in. So Ria in the back end is crunching all this data, not just for Anjan, but users like Anjan, right? And uh, giving our coaches the consolidated insights. So Ria is saying Anjan has just binge eaten around 5.30 without any workouts that evening. Ria also says that black coffee is what caused irregular sleep pattern. And finally, Ria has also recognized that similar trends were seen on previous few weekends as well. Probably it is Anjan's weekend lifestyle. So with all this information, a coach, all has to do is send a good advice to the user, right? Most personalized advice without really looking into various different data points. But the user at the end of it gets the right advice from the coach. Not only this, I think as a coach, your duty is also to give the right diet plan to users, right? And Ria is becoming smarter even here. So in the same example, Ria has identified black coffee, which had a poor glycemic response, and suggests to replace that with lemon tea. Ria also realizes that chips is something which Anjan binges on over the weekend and gives a healthier alternative. Not just that. Ria has also recognized that vitamin D, B12 is where Anjan has slightly lower marks and includes pumpkin chia seed pudding in his snack. All that a coach has to do now is review and send the diet plan to Anjan. So this is where the power of AI comes in, and this is where our coaches are going to be able to deliver the most personalized advice on Healthify 2.0. So until 2017, it was mostly coaches who was driving the entire ship. 2018, AI came in and helped uh, coaches deliver right contextual messages to the users. 2019, we introduced smart plans. 2021 and until now, uh, both coach and AI are working hand in hand. So what's next in the world of tech and AI? Let me call upon Abhijit, our VP Engineering, to talk about more on this. Thank you, Swati. That's me. 
I'm going to take you a little bit behind the scenes. And right? we've seen all the fancy uh, slides, the screens. I'm going to talk a little bit about the blood and sweat that went behind making all of this. So let's hear the pro story. If you've been to our office in the last few weeks, this is what you will see most of the people doing. Right? They're waiting at the staircase, at the restroom, on the Zoom call. You know, they just, that's all. That's, that's what some people talked about, the obsession of looking at your glucose level. So that kind of gets into you. You want, to, you want to see, you want to know what is going on with your glucose. I call it the bio stay, right? Like the namaste, it's the bio stay anytime you see anyone, right? I joined back in December, and December and Jan are like one of the busiest months for, uh, for uh, Healthify Me. I jumped straight in. You don't see Tushar pushing me back from there. Uh, lots of issues. You know, traffic is picking up. We're trying to figure out kind of what's going on. In the middle of all this, we find this labs team that's been tinkering with stuff over the last year, right, right, right from the previous summer. And we say, OK, what is this? Mysterious lab project. Something that's going on. A uh, couple of people you know, figuring out NFC, figuring out Bluetooth, and, try, and trying to get some, some data from one of these markers. We say, OK. Let's dig deep. Let's try to mainstream this. That's not as simple. Right now, we are going to use NFC. We're going to use Bluetooth. We're going to use our uh, activity trackers, data that is coming in. Lots of data, stuff that we're not used to so far. Right? We've just seen people entering their diet plans, telling us when they did their workout. But now, this is like a huge flow of data coming into our systems. All of this data needs to be crunched in real time. And that's not all. We need to get our coaches in, their human intelligence, their understanding of a user, mix that, and create a single line of insights and nudges for our users. That's the tech. That's the complexity of the problem. And that's what the team has been working on. This is my experience with BIOS. Right? I, I started wearing the BIOS patch uh, back in January. I've lost, I think, more than a kilo every month since I started that, so three kilos lesser. But this is what we started to realize, that it's not just a line. That now you need to add the markers on what you are eating, what you are drinking, what you are doing. This is a combined picture. This is not just your glucose strength. This is a combined picture of everything that you're doing. Now, I know you're, look, you're blaming the Bundi Laddu there, but yeah, that's what it was. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun building all of this. I like the same, when life throws lemons at you, you put a pious patch on it. This is a story. You know, it, is, it is a device that kind of stays on you, right? And people were concerned, including our developers, about how, how this is going to happen. Uh, so some of the ingenious engineers took it, put it on a lemon, and made it work. Right? I don't have to wear it all the time. I can just put it on a lemon and make it work, start getting the readings. And that was amazing. It has not been simple. Right? And Tushar talked about this a little bit. We've done iterations over iterations. You saw the graph that I showed you. Uh, we looked at steps at some point. We looked at food at some time. We looked at activity details at some time, heart rate, sleep. All of this, so multiple iterations of the same thing again and again, over and over, till we are very happy about it. Uh, you know, crazy deadlines. Every deadline is slightly shorter to shorter <laughs> than the previous one. Uh, you know, late night calls. I think we kicked off the whole thing with 11 o'clock in the night meeting, right? So it's it's been it's been a phenomenal journey. We've had some crazy things happen. So, you know, people have been using their sensors and patches and then going around and then, okay, let me check your glucose, let me check your glucose. And this is what you get. This is what we call as a zombie glucose graph, right? This is when you mix up your sensors. This is when you mix up your uh, devices and this is what you get. We call the zombie graphs. Uh, we have some of the team members here who got so tired testing the smart scale engine that they literally have to sit down on a chair and then just press their legs to see if the smart scale is working correctly, right? So we've had fun times doing that. And this is the team, right? This is the team that has put their blood and sweat to make all of this happen. For a moment, please, in the audience, I want all the... Thank you. I 
I want all the tech team members, design team members, and product team members, if you can please stand up and people can see you. And a big round of applause, please. Thank you, guys. It wouldn't have been possible without you. But that's not all. This is not where we stop, right? We need to keep going. And let's think about what next. There are three streams of data that we are dealing with. There is a stream of information that's coming from the BIOS patch. There is a stream of data that's coming from the variables that you're having. The third one, which is the, the one that is actually about calorie in, food. Nine of 10 people tell us that it is very hard to track food. You have to remember, you have to type, you have to select the quantity, you have to get a type of roti, you get three rotis and you have to pick which one, all of that. Extremely complicated. We're going to solve that and we're going to use another lab project to solve that. What we call snap to roto. As you can see, no typing, no entering, no food names, no food quantities. Take a picture, our AI image processing system will figure out what food it is, what quantity it is, type it in, snap it to your glucose graph, that's it. That's what's coming up next. <laughs> what will we do with all of this? Right? We have all this data with us. We're going to create what we call as the ambulatory glucose profile. This is a graphical and quantitative characterization of how your glucose has been over the 14 days. Now we have a sense, what is your glucose trend? Snap on, food and activity, we know why that glucose trend is the way it looks like. We have a full picture of who you are, what you do, at what point of time, and how that impacts your glucose level. So this can be foods, this can be activities, and this is about you. That we don't stop there, right? we, have, we are healthy for me, we have huge scale. So this data about each food is available from all of our users, activities from all of our users. Slowly we start creating these fingerprints of glucose responses and then start mapping cohorts of similar people. So without having to have a particular food, based on your cohort, we can actually start figuring out how your body's glucose response is going to be for that particular food. Where are we getting to? We're getting to glucose prediction. And what do we do with glucose prediction? We give you early warnings. We know 11.30 in the morning is your glucose crash. 11 o'clock, we make you eat a fruit. Avoid the crash. We know where the spikes are happening. We know where the crashes are happening. We are going to nudge you in time, before time, so that you can change your behavior. We'll have a corrective feedback engine. You went to a movie, ate a tub of popcorn, gave into the temptation, Step in healthy family me intelligence, it'll tell you, okay, you are at Phoenix Market City, please take a 37 minute walk around the mall, the, wash off the sense of your you know, tub of popcorn, right? So we will be able to give you real time, personalized, corrective feedback that can help you fix your glucose. Beyond meal guidance, right? So we will be able to tell you, you tell us what you're planning to eat, and then we will tell you how that will be for you. And then you can pick the right meals, the right combinations, the right choices. So that's how we're going to render the future. And it's going to be on a tight deadline. The other person, the other person who knows about tight deadlines, please welcome Rohan Gupta on stage. Talking about tight deadlines, guys, all of these decks that you see up here, they were done today, 4.30 p.m. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm here to talk about the future of what we've been talking about for so long, right? We've been talking about uh, Healthify 2.0. We've been talking about what that holds for us. But how does it change in terms of what it looks like? How do we make sure that Healthify 2.0 does look like the future of Healthify Me? So we, yeah, let's talk design. Let's talk Healthify 2.0. So 
what we've always been focused on at Healthify Me is function. We've always been focused on getting the UX of our product right. We've always been focused on getting people to be able to track their food as fast as they can, to be able to you know, track water as quickly as they can. But it's come at a slight compromise. It's come at the cost of being a very good looking or a pretty app. And uh, that's something that we've been well aware of. And I think we took Healthify 2.0 as the opportunity to go, and go ahead and change that. Today, we want to talk about form. Not form over function, but form that follows function. Form that actually makes the user experience much better than it is. So we did a couple of things, right? We decolorized the UI. Now, what does that mean? We basically took our, what we know is a very colorful app, and we started taking out the color. Why? So that we could use color more intelligently, so that we could get people to click on what's important and to, to sort of skim over what's not important at that mo moment for them. We also moved to a card-style approach. Why are we doing that? We're doing that to allow modularity. To, we've spoken about flexibility. Modularity is a big part of flexibility. We can give the user the right kind of information at the right time that they need. And we decided to hero the icon. Generally, the app is littered with icons, and they get lost. So this time, we're going to make sure that people are able to find exactly what they need when they need. So we decolorized the UI, we brought in cards, and we decided to hero the icons. Right? We decided to create a design system that's fresh, that's fluid, and that's always evolving. That's something that we know at Healthify Me that we cannot stop evolving. So we created a design system. We call it Brew. So the new Brew design system is going to be everywhere across the app in the next couple of months. And you're going to see it. This is what the, the system looks like. And hopefully, you guys will see it in the app very soon. This is what the new app UIs look like. Uh, and there, some of them are live already. Some of them are coming in the next couple of weeks itself. We also launched a new website, guys. We've had healthifyme.com as uh, the old website for quite some time. We decided to give that an upgrade for Healthify 2.0. So we've got the new website up and running. So yeah, that's the new app, the new website, all of that. But what's next for Brew? What do we do with the future of Brew? Ooh, what does this button do? The next is Dark Brew. We're introducing the dark UI finally for Healthify Me. It's been a while, but we're going to see Healthify Me in dark mode very soon. That's it from my side, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to take a small 15-minute break after this. And we would request you to be back in by 7.10 to 7.12 so that we can get a panel done with Vinod Khosla and Bala. So looking forward to that. Thank you so much, guys.
today we have something special. We have Vinod Khosla who's going to be joining us remotely. Um, and he's going to be uh, in a panel with Bala. Bala is a serial entrepreneur and a successful in Silicon Valley and in India and a successful VC. He's an early investor at Healthify Me and a board member. Moreover, he's a friend and a mentor to the leadership at Healthify Me. Please welcome Bala. All right, everybody. How's everybody doing? I can't hear you. Awesome. Well, um, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Vinod. Uh, Vinod Kosla no, needs no introduction. He's an entrepreneur, one of, the, one of the greatest tech investors in the world. And let's please not keep him waiting. So um, welcome, Vinod. Can we, uh, can we bring Vinod on stage? There he is. We know it's our oh, pleasure to have to you on board. Here. Great to be here. Great to be talking to the Healthify team and everybody else here. Yeah. We're all very excited and uh, thank you once more for uh, waking up in the morning to make this call all the way from um, Silicon Valley. Oh, always happy to do it. <laughs> so we know that I think the first question all of us have here is, um, what did you see in Tushar and what got you to invest in Healthify Me? How did you guys meet? And uh... You know, I have a strong interest in technology-driven innovation where technology can have a huge impact on people. In this particular case, uh, the funny story is when I first met Tushar and first met, met, met the Healthify Me team, I actually uh, didn't make an investment. I passed on the opportunity. Uh, is my light too bright? Uh, uh, um, uh, let me, uh, uh, in any case, um, it was later we met again in 2019 or so that I got deeply interested because Healthify Me was seriously using AI to enhance nutritionists and to uh, provide nutrition advice to people who couldn't afford the higher price points nutritionists enable. Uh, in general, there's always going to be a shortage of real expertise uh, in every country in the world. Um, whether it's a nutritionist or a primary care doctor or a cardiologist or an oncologist. And I love the fact that companies can develop AI to leverage it significantly and make these services much more accessible and affordable for everybody. And I think Healthify Me is one of the pioneers in that. And as they start to add more than just nutrition and the Healthify Me Pro product is adding CGMs and more detailed diabetes care. Uh, I find it very, very exciting because that level of caring for individuals is not possible without the kinds of technology Healthify Me has created. It's also exciting that we see a very, very large company starting to emerge out of India. Uh, that to me is really exciting. Thanks, we know then. Uh, the team, I hope you all heard this. This is all directly a reflection of what you've created. So you got to give yourself a big round of applause for this. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> so, so Vinod, what do you see as the future of uh, metabolic health uh, and uh, the use of technology? I mean, sitting in the vantage point that you're seeing, seeing, you must be seeing you know, all kinds of technologies and all kinds of innovation. Well, we've always known what to do to, avoid, uh, to improve metabolic health. Um, most visibly, metabolic health is about diabetes. Uh, but cardiac health is also related to metabolic health. Uh, recently, it's been speculated it may be one of the larger factors in Alzheimer's disease. So metabolic health is broadly applicable. Uh, and, and it causes a lot of downstream negative effects uh, and costs 
and misery to people, uh, not just costs. Uh, so a service like Health5 Pro that can really address this uh, would make a huge difference. Now, there's multiple parts to it. One, you have to make it scalable, which is where the technology becomes very, very important. And Health5 Me is uh, unique in having developed that technology. Health5 Me is one of the first to start using CGMs to actually manage it and to make all this very affordable for people. I think affordability and means you, more people can access it, and that means more people can benefit. So that's really what's exciting. Uh, the last part, which Health5 Me does incredibly well, is engage the consumer. There's a lot of medical services that don't really engage the consumer. And, and I find it pretty exciting that uh, Health5 Me does great on technology and on consumer engagement. Uh, both of which are essential to a very effective service in a very important area like metabolic health. And uh, in terms of uh, CGMs, which I know you're a big fan of and you've been you know, following this for years, uh, is, has the time come? Is this the time? Are we hitting, is Healthify Pro uh, hitting the market at the right time? Are we too early, too late? Uh, we are definitely on the early side, but that's a good thing because it helps us build and refine the service uh, much better over the next few years. No service is complete when it's introduced. I find it generally takes two years for a service to get better. You know, multiple versions, multiple iterations, it's the nature of technology for us to go through these iterations. Uh, and so, uh, uh, I, I'm glad we are on the early side. We are one of the pioneers in this area, one of the first to apply CGMs, uh, one of the first to even uh, add AI and consumer engagement. So it's uh, pretty exciting. So we know the, the team here has created an amazing product for India. Um, and we are by far, and we were discussing this in the last board meeting, uh, the number one in India. But now the, we're upping the game even more. Um, and as a board, we decided, you know, India is fine, but we want to create a global product, a worldwide product. And uh, we want to compete with the best of the best in the Silicon Valley. Um, the team is all here, the tech, the design, um, and, and, and everybody else. What advice would you give the product design and the tech teams uh, where we take this game from India uh, to Silicon Valley and, and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, you know, with the giants in the valley? Uh, what would you tell them? Uh, how, what, what do they need to do to up the game? Well, what I just said, I think, is the important message. The product is never done. It can always be better. I have a way of irritating people by saying good isn't good enough, great is barely acceptable. I think it's a good philosophy to have in life on everything, but especially on an important product like this. You keep improving it. You keep broadening it. You keep making it much more accessible. Uh, to improve the quality of care and reduce the co uh, uh, service costs so it can be more affordable to everybody. I think we can have a large global impact on this and build a global company out of India in health farming. Um, thanks, Vinod, and I uh, hope the team heard it. So you thought you were spending sleepless hours. Uh, that is just the beginning, so please get used to it. Um, we are going to take this product worldwide and, uh, and we're going to win. So um, uh, we know that I know it's very early for you. Thanks very much for your time. Any, any last words, anything you want to tell the team um, that where we need to be at the next Ignite, uh, you know, where we need to up the game, any words? Well, first, I do want to congratulate the team. It's been incredibly exciting to see what has happened in this company from uh, zero ARR to seven to so on up to a $50 million kind of ARR number and the team starting to go global. As I say, as you move up in the leagues, the level of competition moves up. So we can never rest on our laurels, but uh, the team deserves a real hand and congratulations for what they've achieved so far. It's been a phenomenal journey and a real tribute to the quality of team, Health by Me and 
Mayank and the whole team have put together. Thank you very much, Vinod, for your generous support and, you know, and uh, those great words. So I'm, it's very motivational for, uh, for everybody here. And, uh, and thanks, everybody. This is uh, it's a great opportunity. Thank you very much, Vinod. Thank you. Bye-bye, mm -hmm. everybody. So over the last few years, um, we have heavily scaled, um, not just in India, but globally, but in India, um, I think all of us in this audience would um, guess that most of our scale came on the Android front. And that's just one small part of our partnership with Google. And Google's always been at the center of any support that we require from the ecosystem. Um, Tonight, we look forward to talking to, guys, is it ready? Tonight, uh, we look forward to talking to Sanjay Gupta, um, who is the country head of Google. Uh, some of his team members are in the audience today. Guys, can we give it up to Sanjay Gupta, please? How are you? Sanjay, can you see us and hear us? So this tends to happen, guys. I mean, it's, it's, it's a part of the Ignite experience. If we don't goof up, then Ignite is not Ignite. So bear with us. Hi, Sanjay. Hope you can see us. There are 1,000 people in front of us. Uh, welcome to Ignite. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Ignite. Uh, I just gave a quick background. I mean, if you missed that, I gave a quick background. Just wanted to get started right away. We have been um, talking about how large we are as Health of Family uh, during the course of this uh, entire Ignite um, function tonight. Um, just wanted, from your vantage point, uh, how do you view Health of Family uh, within the health and wellness ecosystem in India? Yeah, so first, congratulations to all of you on a very special moment. I think uh, to Healthy Family team, which is here, to Anjan, to you, and to Tushar. Uh, I think from what I just heard on what you're launching, you're launching Healthy Fi Pro, which is personalizing both diet and workout. And I think, I do hope that not only do you personalize it, but potentially you personalize it for a billion Indians. So that's my hope and wish for all of you. And just from my vantage point, I would say that uh, my belief is that technology is really changing the world and how problems need to get solved. If at all, if I reflect back on the last two years, COVID really changed the way we look at health as a country very deeply. And that really brought into limelight the opportunity and the, and the power, what technology can do to save lives. And my personal belief is that technology makes a big difference when it is purposeful and disruptive. And from the lens that I look at, when I meet Tushar and I hear him and I hear all of you speak, I feel there's a deep purpose that Healthy Fire brings to India. But above all that, the disruption that you think of, when you talk about that you can measure glucose level at the tap of a click automatically, that's disruption. You talked about how a coach can look at a million data points for you, Anjan, and tell you in a, on, on the fly in three simple things that you need to do, maybe drink less coffee. I think that's disruption. The fact that you went ahead 10 years back and thought of launching a, a, a health app in India or, a, or really solving for health in India is disruption. So I see from my vantage point, Healthify me as a purposeful disruption in India. And I do think you have a huge potential to change India and potentially the future of India. Take a bow, guys. It's, it's not been an easy, easy journey throughout the pandemic, Sanjay, as you pointed out. Um, uh, we have had to adapt to changing times um, by coming up with new solutions. But I'm pretty sure 
there is also a lot cooking within Google Labs, a lot of things that are happening on Google's front. Um, it'll be nice to know from your point of view, uh, is there something that this audience needs to know? It's a, it's a combination of uh, people in, uh, from the investment circles, it's a combination of uh, heavy engineering teams over here. Um, and any word from you would uh, probably be um, something that they wouldn't have heard before, possibly. And uh, uh, perhaps we'll shed some light on what Google is doing. Yeah, so I think, uh, thank you for asking that question. I do think, I think all of you being where you are in the, in the Indus Valley of this country, not the Silicon Valley, you know a lot about what is happening in the world of technology and impact. And I do think, uh, from my point, I look at India as the biggest opportunity that all of us are looking at together, including us at Google. Our belief is that we want to make the internet helpful and safer for a billion Indians. And that's what we work for from a very India lens point of view, not the Google global lens point of view. And within that, I do think the areas that we deeply care about are from a very India lens are health, agriculture, and education. I think these are three challenges which have not been solved well for a market like India and for the developing world. And as Google, we are actually deeply committed, not only with our own technology teams, but with, our, with partners like you and many more, I think, entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial teams, which are solving for it, to say, let's partner with them deeply, really solve for those challenges well. Uh, I think there's a lot cooking at Google from a just point of view of, I think the two things from a very India lens, which hopefully should enable what I think in your mission as well, is around, we do want to make the internet accessible to a billion Indians and more by making the opportunity of a device affordable to every Indian. And that means the price points have to change very dramatically for the next 500 million users in this country. Second, we do believe that we are a country which is very diverse. Our languages change every few kilometers. And how do we ensure that when somebody in Kanyakumari wants to talk to somebody in Kashmir, they can talk to each other without with technology not being a barrier, but an enabler for conversation to happen in their local languages, but real time conversations. So I think those are two of the themes that we believe from an India point of view, we are deeply committed to and solving for between our global teams and India team. Thank you for that, Sanjay. I think over the next few years, uh, we will continue to work very closely with your teams. Uh, they've been extremely supportive. I know some of your team members are here. Uh, without you, probably Ignite wouldn't have been possible either. So thank you for your time. But before you leave, any parting words for the team um, tonight? I think I'm inspired to hear what you are doing today. And power to all of you and to your dreams. And unreasonable people with big dreams is what will change India. So all the best to you. Thank you. Sanjay Gupta, everyone. Hey everyone, hope you're having fun so far. Awesome guys, great. Well, we've got a fantastic uh, evening planned out ahead, full of entertainment. But before that, we've got our last three segments remaining. So for the next quick one, I'm, I'm very excited to invite uh, over the Zoom, one of our earliest investors, advisors, um, uh, Dr. Amrish Mittal. Uh, Dr. Amrish Mittal, is Padma Bhushan. He's one of the most senior endocrinologists in the country. He's one of the top diabetologists in the world. Um, he's the chairman and head of Max right now, endocrinology, and has been on our uh, has been on our advisory board since 2012. So, uh, Dr. Mittal, can we have you on, please? Ah, there you are, sir. I hope you can see Hi. me and hear us. Am I audible? Yes, of course. Yes. C can you can you hear us and see us? Okay. Yes, yes, loud and clear. Oh, mm. fantastic! Um, so I was just telling them, uh, Dr. Mithil, you're one of our earliest investors, advisors um, at Healthify Me. Uh, you know, guys, at least almost ten years ago, almost to date, 
I remember, in fact, it was, a, it was a Valentine's Day evening, that also I remember, because that was the only time Dr. Mithil had given me time to show up. And, uh, uh, you know, and of course, he didn't know that a 26-year-old, that was not his dream at that time, but, you know, to spend, spend my evening with, with Dr. Mithil, but, 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 uh, but I did. And, uh, you know, at that time, Healthify Me was a concept and I remember actually calling Dr. Mittal when he was in a, uh, he was in a car and cold called him and he thankfully uh, picked up my phone uh, and, and I told him that, you know, this is so and so and this is what I'm starting. And he said, listen, I'm stuck in a traffic jam, so tell me what you're up to anyway. So I told him and he said, well, come see me on Valentine's Day evening. He didn't quite phrase it like that. He just said, come see me. 14th February. And I went to his home and we presented a plan and it's been 10 years of a journey that Dr. Mittal, you've seen us go through. Today we have about a thousand of our team members here, our coaches, our tech design, uh, tech technology design team members and board members. Dr. Mithil, as having seen this journey from that first concept plan till today, I just thought it would be great for you to reflect on it and, and, and tell us from your vantage point, how do you see it? Well, uh, thank you Tushar for inviting me. I wish I could have been there in person, but it just wasn't uh, feasible. Uh, well, uh, about 10 years ago, actually, more than 10 years ago, I uh, had this uh, young man virtually chasing me, stalking me, if I were to uh, use uh, a rather in inappropriate word. Uh, and uh, he was chasing me all the time for an appointment. And you see uh, the startup sort of industry or the startup scene was just beginning to warm up. Everyone wanted to get into the health space. And every other day, someone used to call, I being an old man, people used to think, you know, maybe he'll give us some little idea of what we should do. And probably they were, you know, they weren't sure of what I would say. But so I, I actually stopped meeting people after a while. Uh, but there was something about Tushar and his team. And the first quality that I noticed was that they were incredibly persistent. So persistence pays. Uh, that's a good uh, learning for everybody in the audience, the young guys, the young girls in the audience. Persistence is very important. And the second thing was that after we met, and this was he's right on a Valentine's Day evening, which didn't even occur to me at that point, but he reminded me several months later that it was Valentine's Day. Uh, the, the, they were very receptive to all ideas. There's a bunch of techies who had all the technical know-how and willing to go on modifying. But they really, at that point, what they needed was someone to tell them what patients need, what people want. And I suppose uh, the years of experience they saw in me probably, uh, you know, guided them to me and led them to me. And I think uh, the major difference I thought was their degree of sincerity. Uh, in their in in their proposals, in their actions, in their words, and very importantly, the third point: first is persistence, second is sincerity. They weren't just there to pass time or just you know just another visit. They were serious about what they were doing. And the third thing was that whatever I suggested, and it was a lot in the first one to two years, because just tweaking, you know, I said this won't work. People won't like this. No one's going to do this. You're overestimating the market. I was actually quite critical. And every time they came back with a solution. And that I thought I had just said that and often forgot about it. But a few weeks, sometimes months later, they were back at the door with that problem fixed, that problem modified. So after several such modifications, uh, the product reached a certain level where I suddenly thought, wow, this is going to this has huge scope now, you know, and, and I think that's a, a, a real tribute to Tushar and his team. From there on, there's been no looking back. Of course, we all went through the process of trying to recruit our first patients. We went through the process of trying to train the, the, the nutritionists or the coaches. Uh, but then they really took off and I'm, I'm delighted to be here on this occasion. The fact that the company has grown so big and for me, what is much more important and pardon my saying so in, 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 a, in a meeting like this, for me, what is much more important than the funds raised is the number of people they are reaching. So at heart, I'm, I'm just a doctor. And I think if you reach a lot of people and enable them to lead better lives, it may sound noble. 
but ultimately that's what it's all about the fact that you are facilitating their path to good health by your hand holding advice solid scientific advice i think that's your biggest achievement as i see it and i'm happy to have been part of this journey i still am but in a bigger way uh, in the in the in the beginnings and and probably more as uh, as genuinely just an advisor now so uh, i the other thing is the continuous ability and desire to evolve and improve it's not that we have a product now and it's doing well and you know people are praising so we'll sort of rest on our laurels this is just the, this is just journey it's a never ending journey of of perfection of improvement of proving yourself to be the best and best among the best and i think that's again where uh, the healthy fi me team has excelled in constantly evolving changing modifying uh, and which is why they are here today and now with this pro sort of uh, uh, scheme being launched the device and everything with so much monitoring so much uh, you know data based rather than just generic advice i think uh, you're going to uh, go higher and higher the sky is a limit for you healthify me and tushar thank you doctor that was thank you so much for those words i think it means a lot to our team um uh, so doctor just double clicking on that for a second you said you know with 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 integrations of smart scales metabolic panels continuous glucose monitors i mean and you're in the medical field sort of how do you see the outlook now this was the last 10 years how do you see us going for the next 10 years is this the right direction is there is there a superior direction that we need to evolve to any thoughts on that would be helpful no i think uh, uh, quite clearly the time has come for uh, more data you know more data driven approaches rather than the conventional data driven approaches and i'm glad you're getting on to the in, into the space i think more and more medicine more and more health will be personalized one side does one size does not fit all and everyone needs a customized personalized approach will which this data will enable you to provide and i think uh, more and more in this line you can move further on uh, you know to to genetic predictions to use of genome technologies and with greater greater usage of those technologies i think you will have better predictive markers and probably the cost will also come down right now genome technologies are probably very expensive i'm just floating an idea so the idea is to look at overall health not just on the basis of the present parameters but also probably the next step would be to add your genetic makeup to that and be able to predict for people where exactly they are and how aggressively they need to sort of look after their parameters or manage their health i think you are going great guns it's very very important not to lose sight of one person and that is the user thank you dr mithil never get trapped in technology in a way that we lose sight of the ultimate end user Ab absolutely um thank you dr mithil just as we close this conversation any final words to this entire uh, uh, the team and the ecosystem and our board members over here i think i'm very happy to see healthify where it is today but as i said it's a journey uh, and we have to keep moving ahead till we achieve whatever we think at that point is perfection it's a moving goal goal post it's something that keeps moving when you reach a particular level you have to go to the next and i can see that spirit and drive in this young team uh, and i am very happy to support them whichever way i can uh, in a, you know i can't support them too much but whatever i can provide in terms of uh, my thoughts my if you can call it guidance or or my feelings i'll be very happy to do so good luck good luck for the future thank you thank you thank you dr mithil um it's been a pleasure to usually interact with you at you know 10 11 pm and 7 am because that's the only time slots that you used to have free for me uh dr mithil has been very instrumental in help helping us build stuff that is build our products been building teams building processes that are that are clinically correct that are medically sound and that we are always continuing to achieve higher and goals and set higher objectives so thank you again dr mithil thanks for joining us here at ignite i uh, hope to see you uh, so at some point for an early breakfast or a, or a late evening tea thank you sir um that was dr mithil everybody one of our earliest Thank supporters um guys with this we are moving to our last two segments our, our, our basically our last segment this is going to be uh, 
are, uh, you know, Dr. Mittal talked about these next generation markers, talked about, hey, can you include in some of these future parameters and how do they interplay with what we have? Well, for that, I'd love to invite Manan over on the stage and, uh, and, and go from there and we'll wrap with our, with a couple of other team members. Biju, I've not been able to locate it on you on the stage. Ah, oh, there you go. So, I, uh, you know, and we'll end with a, with a quick speech from Biju. So, Manan, what are these biomarkers? What's going to happen from here on? Um, hey guys, um, so before we talk about the future, I thought we'll talk about what happened during the pandemic. So we were joking while building these slides and um, everyone said that Manan, you have pandemic babies, you have three pandemic babies. And then we thought, hey, that's a good narrative to kind of follow in the slide. So that's what we're going to go with. So my first pandemic baby was Healthify Studio. Tushar spoke up. Tushar spoke about that a little earlier, and um, the pandemic was truly our finest hour. At that point of time, we got through with perseverance, but we also innovated. We got yoga trainers from Mysore, from, from Capri. We got fitness trainers from, from Pune. We got fitness trainers from Kuala Lumpur. All of them came on board, and they built out a system which was built by our engineering and our design team. And all of this came into reality in a matter of a 10 days. So I think that's what happened over there. Um, really memorable time. Sachin wrote code as well. We made it live. Um, some people tried it out. Everything broke. Sachin wrote some more code. After that, suddenly it started working. People started coming in. People started joining sessions. And um, since then, by itself, Studio is a 5 million ARR business. And since the last year, almost 23 million minutes of workouts have happened on Studio. It's a mind-boggling number. So that's one. But I mean, like, Studio was stressful. I mean, like, we built it in 10 days, but then little did we know what was coming up in the future. Um, at Healthify Me, we always have our users' health, health as the primary focus. And um, the way users measure or think about their health changes often. Sometimes they think about their weight. Sometimes they think about glucose. But in, during the pandemic, in 2021, they were thinking about vaccines. Our second pandemic baby was Vaccinate Me. We were in a situation where there were no slots. At, at heart, we are basically builders, we are tech innovators. And when the APIs were available from the government, that's when we thought that, what can we do here to really innovate? What can we do here to really give a high quality experience to a user who's going through a really stressful situation? Again, over a weekend this time, uh, we started work on this on a Thursday evening. And on Tuesday morning, we made Vaccinate Me live. Vaccinate Me was basically a notification system wherein we notified users when slots became available on WhatsApp and on SMS. Um, so at Healthify Me, we've tried several times to go viral. It's been like several marketing campaigns. We'll try to do like some video or something over here, but internally we joke it took a virus for us to go viral. It was two weeks of mayhem. Uh, this is our server RPM at that point of time. And just as we went live, boom. Started going at, like, uh, that's high, right, Abhijit? I think 150. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was crazy. We put our full engineering might at it. Everyone was at it for like two weeks. Finally, we managed to stabilize it. But what was great was all the user love that started pouring in over there. I mean, this was really worth all the effort. When we saw this, it was really emotional for the entire team because lots of us were like up late nights for like a good stretch of like almost two weeks. But then when we saw a feedback like this, it made it worth it. Our efforts also started getting noticed. And at that point of time, we were spending almost the tune of thousands of dollars a day to send out these notifications. With the help of Mr. Vinod Kosla, obviously, we were able to reach out to the powers that be at Facebook and at WhatsApp. And we were able to tell them that, hey, we're trying to do this as a pro bono initiative, but can you help us out? 
Um, Tushar wrote to Vinod one night and next day in the morning we woke up with this email. Cheryl Sandberg wrote to us saying that, hey, this is really cool. Um, Facebook is working closely with the partners on the ground in India and they would be love to learn more what we're doing. One thing led to another and uh, Facebook zero rated the entire initiative for us. All the messages that we sent on Vaccinate Me was completely free. That really allowed us to continue delivering the service. We also were able to use SMS as a backup solution. Maybe the folks from Exotil are in the room. Thanks again for that, really helpful. In line with what I had said earlier, I had actually said that help is always available whenever you need it. Um, during this time, we got to notice um, another interesting independent vaccination slot project where they were also notifying people on Telegram. Um, it, it was run by Bertie, who is in the audience over here as well. Bertie, if you can just stand up where you are. Yeah. So obviously it was, it was a meeting of minds and um, we had a great time speaking about the problem and then that's when we realized, Bertie, why don't you just come on board? So Bertie joined us. We built out a booking system for Vaccinate Me. And also that was built on the government APIs and more than 3 million people actually used our system to book these slots. Um, after that, obviously then Bertie is now he's on board full time and um, a lot of the cool innovation that we've seen around Pro was actually driven by him and his team early on. So heading our labs initiatives fundamentally and then we're always going to be looking at newer things that we can do. So then we thought that coming back to again pandemic babies. So then there was one more baby, obviously. Um, that's, yeah, baby three. Oops, sorry, wrong slide. <laughs> that's my baby over there. She's in the audience somewhere. <laughs> Anyways, uh, just joking, um, obviously another baby, not in as much stress as the pandemic obviously, but this is called Healthify Pro. Um, I'm not going to talk about it again, a lot has been said, Avijit has already talking, spoken about yesterday's deadline, so has Rohan. But I just want to take a few minutes talking about the future of Pro and what is it that we're going to look to do in the future. So obviously we already have the smart scale, we have the metabolic panel, we have BIOS and we have a team of amazing coaches, some of them are in the audience right now. But what's the future? What more can we do? Fundamentally, there are many signals that we can read of the human body and all of this can be used to piece together a great metabolic picture. And that's what we want to explore. That's what we want to use to be able to give high quality advice and outcomes for our users. BIOS 2.0 is something we've already started working on. BIOS 2.0 is going to be a completely live experience. We're going to have it directly connected via Bluetooth to your phone. We're considering food intolerance and microbiome. These tie in really well to Healthify Me's value propositions. We can use this information to connect to our nutrition engine and really understand what is it that users will be able to truly react well to and what they won't. Use that to, try to, to build a truly personalized diet plan. Genetic tests are interesting. Dr. Mittal just referenced to it right now. Is there something about your predisposition that makes it harder for you to lose weight? And lastly, the most important thing, we feel that recovery and sleep is also critical to having high quality metabolic health. And we're really looking forward to like working with partners and truly pushing the boundaries over here. And I look forward to kind of telling you a lot more about this during the next Ignite. Thank you. Uh, just calling on Samit as well now. Samit's recently joined us as our uh, VP of the NRI business, but he's going to do something a little more local this time. Good evening, guys. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Uh, I've just been told that I'm, I'm maybe one of the people between the drinks, so I'll kind of try and keep it short. Um, it's been eight weeks for me uh, in the Healthify Me system, and it's truly an honor uh, working with some of the best minds and hearts to actually bring Healthify Me to uh, this current inflection point. Uh, a quick introduction before I kind of go uh, to what I had to present. Um, well, my, my mother says that when you go and look back uh, in the past, you can connect the dots. And if I was to lay my experience, um, I started off with dishing out unhealthy paranoia about losing money while I was at consulting and private equity. Post that, um, I was dishing unhealthy foods 
while I was the chief growth officer at Pizza Hut India, offline world. And most recently, um, I've been dishing out unhealthy media to maybe so-called couch potatoes while I was at Disney Hotstar. And it's great in terms of bringing all of this experience as we start thinking about what we can potentially create uh, in the future. So I, I don't need to maybe spend any time here. We are de definitely a technology-first company and uh, future-relevant. Uh, our years are always constantly on trends. And we've spoken a lot about personalization, and I think everyone in this crowd can definitely kind of echo that we use personalized cosmetics, personalized food products, and what data is fueling is even more and more personalization, and Healthify is standing just at the front rows of those in terms of making it even bigger and better. The second trend, which, of course, uh, is, is on the screen, is an offline, online lines blurring. I think gone are the days where just D2C brands could just focus on Facebook marketing or, say, cheap Chinese imports. Um, there is a need for us to differentiate our online presence to offline and start fueling that intersection of consumer interfaces, exchanges, and consumptions. But most importantly is authority. I think Tushar and the team has been on this journey for 10 years. I think the number of people who have used it, the brand salience of it, is awesome. And people start using products and services, uh, repeat, loyalty, as a function of authority. Our service coaches are right up there in terms of being held in our customer mind. And for example, right now 10,000, uh, actually close to that number of restaurants, take Healthify nutrition guidelines and use it as a, as a sense. So it's a great starting point, uh, but important trends in terms of the consumption landscape. But these are not just trends. Um, we are driven by conviction, and we have kind of data to kind of work on these trends. So of course, we have billion data points coming through now various devices, our platform coming every week for us. It kind of gives us that nuanced, personalized, custom uh, input to maybe a solution of one. We went back to our customers, close to 10,000 customers, and we got a resounding 75% yes, saying that, guys, listen, I need your help beyond what you're offering as services um, across customized meal subscription, which ties back to our diet plans, customized uh, supplements, which maybe are catering to my lifestyle disorders or deficiencies that you now know on the platform, and maybe even functional foods, for that matter. But more importantly, we, from a service layer, we're right up there, but our coaches still want more, and there was a thumbs up, saying that if we were to have come up with an integrated suite of uh, products and services, maybe we can deliver much more. So what does that mean as we start thinking about some of our next steps and actions as a, as a company? As we start looking at vision of Healthify Me Platform 2.0, introducing Healthify Me Experience Stores. What would this mean? Would be an interplay between services, where literally now you don't have to go to a platform and just get your details in, but go to your nearest store, start with a diagnostic test, maybe have a health consultation with some of our experts, and get in terms of knowing yourself better in terms of what you need to do. You've spoken about an array of products, and we're not going to stop here with just BIOS. There are smart scale BIOS microbiome kits. Imagine like a fancy glaze glass with array of products which help us move products to services consumption and likewise. And finally, like I mentioned, products, guys. A person who needs a thyroid protein is very different from a person who maybe needs a PCOS-related or maybe a, a, a person who has a, a concoction of uh, requirement of vitamin and mineral deficiencies. And that's where I think this is all going to come together, not as just a product uh, for everyone, but something which is very customized for you, everyone who's sitting in the audience here. So yeah, that's about it. And I think uh, with that, I would, from a newbie to a veteran, I would like to hand it over to Rosh. Over to you, Rosh. Hi, good evening, everyone. 
Sokal, know, why feels, don't you take over? It feels uh, so good and great to be over here. And uh, while everyone over here has talked about, you know, what's new and uh, what are the new features that Healthify Me is going to launch in the coming weeks and weekends and so on and so forth, we are going to talk about an army that basically takes all these features and delivers it to our users, right? Uh, this army comprises of, an army comprises of soldiers, but our army comprises of coaches who are sitting right over here, and I would like to talk about... I would like to talk about their story today, right? So last night when we met, uh, we had around 500 of these soldiers or coaches with us, and they were spread across different parts of India. And a few weeks after the uh, Ignite 2020, we had the pandemic set in, and every fitness company or every health and wellness company around was actually uh, you know, laying, off different ki uh, laying off coaches, whereas for us, uh, very happy and proud to share that we were able to quadruple our strength, and we are today a 2,000 coaches spread across the globe and servicing from different parts of the globe and servicing and transforming lives of different users. But that's not all, right? Uh, as in how we grew, we were able to, you know, we were able to uh, develop more in our capabilities. Uh, we today, as a team, speak more than 30 languages. Uh, our coaches are present in more than 20 countries and are able to transform lives every single day. And talk about specialization, you name any specialization and you'll have a handful of coaches at Healthify Me who are certified and who are ready to help you out over here. So this part of the story is the part where we talk about the growth of our army. But the next part I'm going to talk about is about their guts and it's about their persistence. So let's rewind back to 2020, right, when the pandemic had hit. When the pandemic had hit, a lot of things happened. A lot of uncertainties was, was there. Um, and it was not just us. Uh, it was around the ecosystems. So people were concerned about their finances. A lot of people were losing their jobs. A lot of you know, mayhem was there. Small, big businesses were either shutting down or laying off. Uh, people were concerned about their work life, because work and personal life started merging, and that gave rise to a lot of mental uh, wellness issues. And secondly, and the lastly, uh, the biggest concern over here was around health. Uh, it was not just, you know, what, 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 what kind of nutrition that I should take during these times, but it was around vaccines, whether I'll get it, if I'll get it, how I'll get it, right? And as Healthify Me as a team, we decided that, you know, we are going to have a two-way response over here. One, which was to ensure uh, one which was you know, directed to our coaches, and the second which was directed to our users. So when we talk about our response for the coaches, we decided that no matter what happens in the industry, no matter what's happening in the ecosystem, we are going to stay together, and we are going to sail together and face the storm together. We didn't let go any coach, uh, and we stayed together and faced the storm. The second thing which we did was uh, we ensure that we are able to add an extra layer of comfort through all kinds of financial support, right, whenever a coach needed, and not just to a coach, but we also ensure that we are able to, you know, support their immediate family members as and when required. And the final thing was that we, we were not immune to, you know, uh, while, while Healthify Me is known for remote working and, you know, work from home, but this was an extreme, so, and we were not immune to it. So we opened a dedicated helpline uh, which any of our team members could speak to a mental wellness counselor and could, you know, take their help. Now, now you all saw Tushar, Anjan, and everybody, right, uh, talking about the smiling curves which were moving up from registrations to revenue, right? And we thought that, you know, this is what, what I, whatever we did so far maybe was adding to it, but that was not it. Uh, what really made the difference was that our coaches took this to a next level. They ran with it, they literally uh, went the extra mile. The first thing uh, that our coaches did was that they provided a support to the community uh, 
at this point, at the point in pandemic, uh, they were not just coaches, they were mentors, they were friends, they were almost like a family member. Each of our coach ensured that they were opening themselves from extra hours of consultations to ensure that no user was ever left behind. Even when the times were tough, even when their own family members were going through tougher times, when their own family members were inflicted by COVID-19, they woke up the next morning and ensured that they never left the user unattended. And we have thousands of such stories, right? We have thousands of such stories uh, where the coaches went the extra mile to ensure that they give our health farming user the best premium experience ever. Lastly, I want to thank everyone over here, all the service coaches and all the associates at Customer Delight team for you know, persevering and for persevering and uh, continuing to you know, believe in the mission of healthifying a billion lives. Uh, there is one team that I want to call out. It is the team that is one of the strongest pillars of Healthify Me. It is the team that has driven growth for Healthify Me year on year, month on month, quarter on quarter. Nine out of 10 businesses in India have shut down during the pandemic, one didn't. It is a team that took us from 15 million to $50 million, right? Uh, guys, please give a big round of applause for the sales team and every member of the sales team at Healthify Me. Uh, with this, I would like to hand it over to Roshni to talk about uh, the Coaching 2.0. Thank you, team. Thanks for this that. Is the one. Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, before I go to the Coaching 2.0, I just want to do a little more justice to what um, Swapnil has spoken about. Uh, I want to talk about a couple of coach stories. And we do have a couple of those coaches here. I want to talk about Coach Mrigendra, who during the pandemic time, lost his family members, including his sister, who was 27 years old. And when his customers told him that you need to take a break, the, what, what he told them was that if you are there to stand by me, why would I not be there to stand by you? He never took a break. <laughs> Mrigendra, if you can stand up. You're... It was phenomenal what you've done for your customers. I also want to call upon Venkat. Venkat, if you're here, please stand up. Um, who lost his job during pandemic, and he lost his job twice, in fact. He decided that people needed help. He turned his profession around. He did the ACE certification to be a personal trainer at this point of time, and during the pandemic, he was there to service our customers. And these are brilliant stories. I was touched by one of our coaches who lost his wife in an accident, um, he, he broke both his ankles, he was bedridden, but during the pandemic, he had taken a decision that it doesn't matter what happens to me, but I just want to be on calls talking to my customers. Avneet, he's not here today, but these are inspirational stories that made, that, you know, that makes Healthify Me not a company. Healthify Me truly becomes, for us, it's almost an emotion. Coaching 2.0. What is Coaching 2.0 for us? It's empowerment with technology. And what does that mean for a coach? For a coach, it's real-time data, real-time monitoring, and real-time feedback. But what does that mean for a client? For a user, it's freedom, fitness freedom. And it's no longer restrictive diets. It's no longer uh, very stringent exercise routines. It's about figuring out what his body needs at what time, what is his lifestyle, what is his circumstance, what is his metabolic panel, what is his uh, body composition, and a whole lot. He gets to choose. And what does that give him? Makes him change his behavior, and finally, gives him sustainable results. Now, uh, just a chat between Tushar and me. Tushar, I saw a huge spike in your glucose levels last evening. You can see the spikes there, and you can also see the blue dots there where me as a coach, desperately trying to reach out to him. 
He says, champagne at the party. I said, I can see that. Well, he lied to me, there was dessert as well, which he had slightly logged in. And I said, yes, dessert as well. Next time, try having chicken salad 30 minutes before champagne, move around, and it helps if there's a dance floor. Well, a few days later, that's Tushar. You seem to be in better control of your glucose level these days. And then Tushar says, taking your advice, coach. I took a healthy protein salad before I stepped out and even managed to check out the dance floor. And here, this is what a coach sees. You can see the orange icon where Tushar has logged his meal, and you can see the blue icon where he's actually, that's where he was on the dance floor, he's logged that, and then you see that his glucose levels are pretty much in control, and he's great, changed his behavior, sustainable, <laughs> woohoo, <laughs> lifestyle. Okay, now why I wanted to bring that up is, this is what a coach sees, what really happens behind the scenes, right? What other views a coach has? This is an interesting snapshot of a coach dashboard where the coach can see the basic profile, he can see the diagnostic reports, the metabolic panel right there, he can see the body composition, he can see the glucose levels and a whole lot of things, right? He can also see what foods you've eaten and what workouts you've tracked. And all of this is just right in front of the coach, real time. And this is the wow that the coaches are going to experience. This is going to make a coach into a super coach. What's life for a coach going to be in Healthify 2.0? We want to focus on our people a lot more. Our people are precious for us. We want to work on compensation models that heavily reward impact. We want our best coaches and our coaches to earn not just the industry benchmark, but way above that. And we also want to prioritize work-life balance. I know coaches here, you've been struggling with the uh, old dashboard, new dashboard for quite some time, and it's time consuming, and uh, promise you guys, post-Signat, we're working on moving entirely into one dashboard for you guys. That's gonna make your work a lot more easier. And yes, guys, we want to enable this by the end of this quarter, and that's a promise to you guys. Okay, that brings me to the end of my presentation, but before I leave you guys, um, coaches, there's something that's coming soon. And what is that one thing that you've been waiting for all of your time on Healthify? Make any guesses? Coach Connect is already there, guys. <laughs> Mobile? Whoa. It's the Coach Connect on the mobile app, guys. Thank you. Um, Shabbat. Yeah. Okay, uh, almost done, guys. I think we have a couple more talks before we can get back and get to drinks and dinner. Um, we have a very special guest also with us over here who's kind of decided to come on board as our chief medical officer. I'd like to welcome Dr. Shivani to the stage. A quick bio about her, she's a double board certified physician in the fields of psychiatry and obesity medicine from California. She's the founding director of the world's first academic metabolic psychiatry clinical program housed at Stanford University. Metabolic psychiatry, which is something that she's going to cover, is a term that she coined to describe an emerging clinical discipline that focused on the integrative study and treatment of metabolic abnormalities and relationship to brain health. Um, I think it would be best if she explains it. <laughs> so, uh, please welcome our new Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Shivani Sethi. Good evening, everyone. Uh, hello, Bangalore. Uh, it's been over 12 years since I last came to Bangalore when my father started the first call center in India. Uh, I am from Palo Alto, California, from Silicon Valley. So let me tell you why I'm here and why I decided to join Healthify Me. Why would a professor, researcher, clinician come here and work in a different country? So the reason is that I was very impressed with what Healthify Me is doing. And on a daily basis, I see patients and I look at, thank you, Monin. I look at metabolic health. I evaluate metabolic health and I treat patients. I do research. 
What this company's leadership has shown me after meeting Vinod Khosla as well as Tushar, uh, I've been speaking with Tushar over the last year, is that there's an adaptation and an evolvement into improving access to care and, and quality of care. So as a doctor, I care very much about the quality of care and that the science is respected. So the conversations I had with Tushar were about a lot of things related to what I do in practice and how that's integrated into Pro now, and I'm so, so pleased to see that. So the science is very important, and we've been talking about metabolic health. So I want to define that for you, and I realize that I'm the last person standing between food and, your, and uh, you know, dinner, so I'm going to make this really quick, okay? What is metabolic health? It is the absence of metabolic disease, which means no diabetes, no high blood sugar, uh, no cholesterol issues, um, no other nutritional deficiencies, etc. Okay, so globally, the lifetime risk of insulin resistance, and I'm going to talk about insulin resistance, is about 36%. That's pretty high. Look at the person on the left of you, and look at the person on the right of you. One of you has metabolic syndrome, statistically. Okay? Now, that's important. It's not just about weight loss. It's also about the absence of metabolic disease. So you don't have to be overweight. You don't have to have a, uh, you know, obese BMI, and you can still have a metabolic issue. So that's really important. The carbohydrate insulin model of obesity is the future of metabolic health, and I'm going to tell you why. This is the conventional model that many people learn in medical school, etc. And we eat too much, we take in more energy, it's an equation, it's a math equation, energy in, energy out. You have metabolic fuels, your glucose, your cholesterol, we use it, we burn the energy, and if we have a lot of the energy, it stores into fat. If we have less, we lose weight. Now, if that was completely true, we wouldn't have such a big obesity crisis. So the latest science actually tells us that the carbohydrate insulin model is relevant and important, and what this means is that the foods you eat will affect your glucose levels, and Tushar was explaining the glucose levels being measured in the pro. What is helpful to know also is that the glucose levels are also affect hormones. So something called insulin, which is a fat storage hormone, and it's also a growth regulator, what it does is it stores fat. So you can imagine if your glucose levels are higher, your insulin is spiking, then you're actually increasing your fat storage. And that's basically the point of this slide, okay? Now, what is metabolic psychiatry? Very briefly, I'm going to tell you that metabolic health is not just about diabetes or the heart. Just like Vinod was saying earlier, it's broad. It affects many things. So I am a psychiatrist as well as an obesity medicine physician, and metabolic psychiatry is looking at improving metabolic dysfunction or metabolic health to improve brain health. Okay, so that means improving cognition, improving aging, um, improving depression, mood, um, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis. These things are brain related, right? And I'm not just saying that, there's actually science behind this that when you improve 
your metabolic health, we do see reduction in inflammation. We see improvements in neuronal growth. We see energy production also improve. So your memory, your cognition, is improve, will improve. So if we change our behavior, what we eat, diet is very powerful, nutrition is powerful, it's almost as powerful, if not as powerful as the medication, or two. So driving positive behavior change could also improve metabolic health, which I was saying, and improve brain health. And when you improve brain health, you can actually also improve behavior. And that is also something we know with the science. The reason I'm saying that is because the hormonal levels actually affect your chemical messengers in your brain, so you can think better, you can feel better, you can move better. So how are we going to achieve this at Healthify Me? Well, we're going to achieve it as a team. We're going to advance our coaching protocols. I think a lot has been said about that. My job is to make sure the safeties are in place, that the quality of care is there, as well as medical differentiation. Um, and I'll explain what that means. Now, there are a lot of different dietary pieces here. And I think Tushar also has mentioned the flex and contextual systems quite extensively, so I'm going to skip that, and we'll talk about really quickly my goals, our goals together, is evidence-based research and clinical practice. That's what I will ensure. Looking at the data is really important. So I agree with Ambrish about things being data-driven, and we're going to use that real-time feedback to adapt and make changes and evolve, like Healthify Me has been doing very well. Personalization, Manan talked about the microbiome and some of the other genetic pieces that we will also look at, and we will do the due diligence for that, I can assure you. It won't be just extra tests that don't mean anything, but it'll be clinically useful. And lastly, condition-specific management. So PCOS, hypertension, thyroid, diabetes, how are we going to look at things differently based on your medical history? So this is very individualized and really the way that care should be. Before I end and hand it off to Tushar, there's one extra quality that I wanted to add to Ambrish's list. He said Tushar is persistent, he said that Tushar also uh, follows up. I would add that he's extremely passionate and his heart is in the right place. Shibani, uh, for those very kind words, I really, really appreciate it. Guys, give it up to Dr. Shibani. It's her third day in office, and it's not, it's very daunting to be on stage and take on the role of the chief medical officer of a company. Uh, me and I think Biju were talking how there are not that many companies that have, uh, you know, tech startups that have chief medical officers, and we're really happy and excited to have the, one of the best people in this very specific field in the world now who's going to be on board and working with us towards better protocols. Now, I know everybody's been saying I'm the last person standing between you and the drinks and food, and I think I'm just going to keep repeating that till like, no, uh, that's not the case. Mine's a real quick wrap, guys. This is the uh, end of our presentation and followed by uh, a quick, uh, a usual, we usually have a guest of honor that concludes our, uh, our, our Ignite ceremony, as we, I'd like to call it. And this time around, we're bringing on Biju to speak uh, as who's, who's going to be the, who's, who's the lead partner at LeapFrog, um, and who, who actually was part of the committee who invested our CDC round and has been leading our board from the front. 
And before that, um, you know, I, I, what I wanted to talk to you guys about for a couple of minutes was a little bit of why we do what we do. And, uh, and, 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 and just before we do that, thanks for having those maps up. This is how our user base has evolved, guys, in the last few years. To, uh, you guys talked about the coaching piece. We spent 100 million messages between Exchange, our clients, and our coaches during the pandemic time. So thank you for that, coaches. This is your hard work represented on the map. Um, and, 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 and God willingly, that user base will continue to expand a lot more globally in many other countries. So I'll just take two minutes to talk about why we do what we do as my concluding remarks. So um, it's because we at Healthify have always believed passionately that obesity and the linked metabolic syndrome is the greatest threat our race has ever faced. Um, We've today, in the last, rather in the last couple of decades, what has happened is that there are far more people who are obese than who are malnourished. You know, you might have seen, seen the Yuval Noah, Yuval Noah Harari's uh, uh, presentation before, but about 30 years ago, we had more people malnourished, about a billion malnourished, and we had you know, uh, very few people who were obese. And coming 2030, we have 3 billion people who are going to be obese, and less than 200 people, million people who will be malnourished. So the future of the burden of problems that we as humanity are going to face is in obesity and metabolic syndrome. Honestly, COVID or anything else that has happened recently doesn't compare with the enormity of the task we are facing with food and with fitness being the way it is right now. This is how obesity has evolved in the last few decades, and we are all familiar with the consequences of it. Dr. Shabani laid out many patterns, and I think We've all recognized today that obesity and metabolic syndrome is as deadly as climate change. Um, thankfully, it is reversible with behavior change, and which is exactly what Healthify does. Very shortly, um, what I want to tell you about is how we are actually, what's, what's, the, what's the secret evil game plan for the next 10 years? Um, you know, in the, in, by Ignite 2018, what we had accomplished with Healthify Coach was remarkable, that we could change behaviors, and there's a business model around it. It also generated, you know, with, with, by 10,000 subscribers, with 19 million messages exchanged, 1 billion inputs, and inputs I mean food, exercise, fitness steps, etc., and about 1,000 man years of data, we, were, we could educate and train our AI systems enough to be able to build Healthify smart. And that's when we took a heavy leap towards scale. So we leapt towards impact first, learned from that, used all that technology to hit scale. And you know what happened from 2018 to 22. Well, you know, we, it's several times increase in size and scale and impact. That was 1.0. Today, we have taken a dramatic movement towards Pro. Pro is actually going to be even more expensive than Coach. BIOS is pricey. And even though we'll probably be one of the only companies to be able to offer Healthify Pro or something similar at less than $100 a month. We're looking at pricings between 5,500 and 6,000 rupees right now. Most of our peers offer the same at 10,000 rupees. And the reason we are able to do it is because we're able to predict glucose curves and we don't require one to have a BIOS all the time, but as an intermittent layer, as a rehabilitatory layer. So even though we'll be doing that, it is still not a product that is at the price point, which is cheap enough, as Vinod was saying, it needs to get accessible, it needs to get affordable, so how do you do that? Today we've taken a huge leap in that direction, but with Pro and the Smart Scale and Metabolic Panels and BIOS and, and several other systems that are coming on it, we believe that today we are at 200,000 subscribers, and the day we hit 100,000 Pro subscribers, we would have had exchanged a billion messages between our coaches on various parameters, we would have had a trillion inputs of food, fitness steps, biomarkers, metabolic panels, smart scale, and bios-linked information. And we would have invested about 10,000 man years worth of coaching of our, you know, the 2,000 coaches and, and increasing in size. And with this, as Abhijit mentioned, the future is looking supremely exciting. Our teams are already working on how can we do to pro what we did to coach. What we did from coach to smart movement, can we take that and adapt that to pro and build predictive patterns so that people who, who, who don't have access to things like CGMs or scales or metabolic panels can have predicted abilities of what those things might be like. 
Healthify Pro scaled with AI is something that we've already begun to invest behind. And I can't even imagine in a couple of years' time how that will pan out. We have a dream that a billion people will be healthified, that a billion people will have CGMs. Now, maybe a few million will have the physical one, but the rest deserve to have a pr an AI-predicted virtual one. Maybe a few million will have smart scale, but hundreds of million needs to get similar attributes based on the markers that they can track, based on what food fitness and patterns and things that they are mentioning. Learning from the few millions that can afford to pay for metabolic panels, we believe hundreds of millions can be provided with predictive insights on their thyroid patterns or their vitamin patterns. I know it sounds too futuristic, but so did smart five years ago. And I have full faith that in the coming Ignites, 2.0 vision will not be complete till we actually make benefits of all of these technologies and serve it for that billion masses that we are highly and super focused on. And we thankfully have backings of investors. You heard from Vinod, you're going to hear it from uh, Biju, who also backed that vision very heavily. Well, and it's coming soon. Um, so today, guys, you've seen a new faith in taking on a vision. Remember we started with what does it take to healthify a billion? We've taken a new, you've seen us take on a new vision. You've seen us show impact and at scale. You've definitely seen that we have guts and perseverance. We're seeking believers once again in this 2.0 vision, in this possibilities, in the future that seems bright and in the next 10 years. And we're damn sure that we're going to help the 5 billion. That's all. That's us. That's Ignite. Biju, here's to you for the conclusion speech. So I, I really am the proverbial last guy standing between you and the drinks, and this is it. I'll keep it really sh short. Every single time I have met anyone from the Healthify Me community, and that, that feeling is reinforced today, having met far larger number than I had before, a Margaret Mead quote comes to my mind. Never underestimate the power of a small group of committed people to change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And we have all seen this in, in small ways and big, whether it's that cricket team that we are part of in, in our college or gully cricket, which just doesn't lose somehow in spite of fancy opponents. Some have seen it in big ways, Tushar, Bala, who are part of Aadhaar, the single largest unique ID experiment in the history of humanity. And I'm beginning more and more to believe, after everything I have seen over the last 18 odd months that I've been part of this community of Healthify Me, that we have that magic sauce. There are three components, generally, that, I be, that makes me re reinforce that, that passion and vision. One, group of people, whether it is Tushar, Anjan, Manan, Sachin till recently, Roshni, Shefali now, we've heard from Abhijit, Rohan, and probably most importantly, the 2,000 coaches that Roshni spoke about. I personally have experienced a couple of them, Ritika and Anushree, who I'm sure are here, and have been spectacular in my own health journey. So, so you have these incredible people coming together with once-in-a-lifetime tools. 600, 700 million Indians already have access to some sort of smartphone or the other. A billion people with smartphones is not too long away. About a GB of data in India costs only around nine cents, whereas, say, in the US, I think it's two, three dollars. In Kenya, it is about 80 cents. So there is that, that con configuration of great people with fantastic tools which they can get access to possibly once in a lifetime. And then finally, there is a worthy problem. We, we heard of that in a far more eloquent fashion from Tushar. But for me personally, when I look at the problems that Healthify Me is trying to solve as a former doctor and as a human being who lost his father much earlier than he lost his parents because of diabetes, 
I cannot be more passionate about the problem you're trying to solve, Tushar and, and the rest of the team. So, so you have this magical combination. You have great people. You have once-in-a-lifetime technology, and that technology is only going to get cheaper, better, with 5G, quantum computing, and so on. And then you have this worthy problem, not just for India, but globally, that Healthify Me is well-positioned to solve. So I'll just end it all by quoting, I think it was Gandhi who said this, and very relevant for folks who have built things like Healthify Me over a 10-year period. First, they ridicule you. First, they ignore you. Then they ridicule you. Then they fight you. And then you win. I have had no doubt in all my engagement with Healthify Me, but more today than ever before, that this is your moment. You're at the vanguard of the global fight against chronic diseases, and you are going to win. Thank you for taking me on as a partner in your journey, and uh, thank you for this wonderful Ignite Tushar and team. Now you're off to your drinks for sure. Thank you. Hello. Thank you so much, Biju. And thank you all for being part of Ignite 2022. We really loved having you guys here. Yeah, there were some issues here and there, but then thanks for bearing with us. We were a little rusty after doing it for two years, not having done it for two years. But obviously, next time will be much better. Uh, however, we noticed like one small issue. There was, the there was just one small issue, right? Yeah. I think, I mean, apart from the other glaring issues yeah. that were there. <laughs> so, there I was, mean, like, yeah. through, throughout the decks and throughout the presentation, some people said Healthify Me, someone said Healthify. So I said Healthify 2.0, somebody said Healthify Me 1.0. Yeah, Tushar, you want, I want to clear this up, yeah. There's no better time, Tushar. You need to... Who, who are, we? are we? Are we Healthify Me or are we Healthify? Like, let's just have an answer. I don't know. I mean, we are Healthify Me, right? But like, sab log to healthify kehte yaar. That's true, actually. So what do you guys say? Should we drop the me? I think it's a we new should drop vision. the me. Yeah. Shouldn't it be a new company? It should. With a new name. Definitely. For the 10th year mark. Yep. Hey guys, should we drop the me? Show your hands if you think we should drop the me and move to healthify. No, and yes, equally faced. Oh man, this is like an equally cut room. People love our name. I mm. think the, the purpose of our brand has always been to healthify a billion people, guys. I started it because I wanted to healthify me. But I think it's time we moved on to a much wider community. Uh, we would like to humbly present that, in, and we should of course talk to everybody here, but in the coming weeks, we'd love this, and please do not tweet this, this is only confidential between the people in this room, Chatham's room apply, but we would love to change ourselves to a new beginning, to a new brand, to a new vision. We'd love to call ourselves Healthify. So thank you for that. Thank you for Ignite. Thank you for being here, for being the best team in the world to support this, mi this mission. Let's have a hell of a night ahead, guys. Thank you, everybody. The drinks are open, the food's laid. Let's have a fun evening ahead.